Public Business Emerging Tech Award. Came, sir, your dinner. On a tile? Arre, it's antibacterial. Mm-hmm. Easy to clean. But plates? Can buy. It's a tile ad. Uh, I am plus technology se bane world class tiles. Tile ho to simple ho. Hindu dharm mein shakti shabd hota hai. Hum shakti se lad rahe hain. Ek shakti se lad rahe hain. इंडिया अलायंस ने अपना घोषणा पत्र शक्ति को खत्म करने के लिए किया है मैं इस चुनौती को स्वीकार करता हूं और मैं इन शक्ति स्वरूप माताओं बहनों की रक्षा के लिए जान की बाजी लगा दूंगा तो लगता होगा इतना सारा काम मोदी कर रहा है तो ये मोदी थकता क्यों नहीं है भ्रष्टाचारी कान खोल करके सुन ले ये मोदी नहीं आया 140 करोड़ देशवासियों का भ्रष्टाचारियों के प्रति गुस्सा निकल करके आया है साथियों ये मोदी से इसलिए नाराज है क्योंकि मोदी आज देश के गांव गरीब के साथ चट्टान की तरह खड़ा है From the Delhi studios of Republic TV, it's time for Arnab Goswami on the debate. Arnab Goswami on the debate at 9 presented by Amity University powered by RP Sanjeev Goenka Policy Bazaar Ashok Leland co-powered by Belcol and Fabricare Good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen The big story of the day is that Arvind Kejriwal has not got any immediate relief in the Supreme Court of India. Rather this entire matter is going through you know the process. The ED has been given a notice there will be a reply from the other side and now what has happened is effectively the Supreme Court has denied any quick relief for Arvind Kejriwal. I think the matter is unlikely to be resolved soon. The prospect therefore of a longer time in jail for Arvind Kejriwal is a certainty. In my view Delhi at this stage with Kejriwal in jail and continuing in jail for some time at least needs an interim chief minister. Delhi cannot operate in an arbit way. Delhi cannot have nobody in charge and Delhi cannot be run from Tihar jail. the moral argument of trying to look like a martyr by being a chief minister from jail will not help the people of delhi but more importantly across the country it will set a terrible precedent what if the chief ministers of many other states of the country larger states are all in jail if kejriwal does not come out of jail for 6 months for example will the government run like this for the rest of the year as well Personally I don't think the center will disturb the situation or thrust the imposition of president's rule. Therefore this is rather a question the courts must take up. And since the courts take up so many issues anyway Suomoto they should guide the nation 
on whether running a government from jail is a precedent that we, the people of India, should live with. Debate number one tonight, viewers. Absolutely no relief in Laker Gate for Arvind Kejriwal. His judicial custody gets extended. I have Harish Salve joining me on that debate as well. I have a full debate on it. Salve is joining me right on top of the show at 9 p.m. tonight. And as retired judges and lawyers make explosive claims and tell the Chief Justice of India not to come under pressure, what's the real story surrounding the Supreme Court of India? What kind of pressure is being put on the country's highest court and how is the country's highest court responding to it? Former Solicitor General Ranjit Kumar is joining me on the debate at 9.25. At 10 o'clock tonight, the world on the edge amidst growing concerns over the escalation in the Iran-Israel conflict. That debate is at 10 p.m. tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And Sarabjit's killer is shot down on Pakistani soil. Divine providence, but Pakistan accuses India's intelligence agency of being involved. That's at 10.30 p.m. And here are the headlines. This Monday evening on The Debate Tonight. Three days ago, the declaration of the first day was done. So, the negative अनुमानों के आधार पर सारा G20 गतिविधि की कोशिश होती है। मैं इसको किसी भी हालत में चौंका देना चाहता हूँ। Prime Minister takes on the Western media lobby, says India does not need to be lectured on democracy. कांग्रेस को पूछना चाहिए कि तुम्हारी क्या मजबूरी है? ये सनातन के खिलाफ इतना जहर उगलने वाले लोगों के साथ तुम क्यों बैठे हो भाई? डीएमके का तो जन्म शायद इस नफरत में पैदा हुआ होगा। प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी शाह प्रेटोर्ड टू सनातन बेटर्स सेस द डीएमके वाज बोर्न आउट ऑफ हेट्रेड फॉर सनातन। नो रिलीफ फॉर लिकर गेट अक्यूज्ड अरविंद केजरीवाल एंड के क as their judicial custody gets extended till the 23rd of April. We found that this was a very disturbing trend. That you, uh, whenever decision comes against you, you try to pressurize the court so that next decision is in your favor. For the first time ever, judges unite against the lobby call out attempts to pressurize the judiciary in another letter to the Chief Justice of India. India gets access to Indian crew on board seized Israeli ship in Iran as Jay Shankar dials his Iranian counterpart. And Sarabjit's killer shot down on Pakistani soil but Pak accuses India's intelligence agency of being involved in the killing. Ladies and gentlemen, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal or the Aam Admi Party cannot wash away the liquor gate taint against his name anymore. Today, the jailed Delhi Chief Minister suffered back-to-back -back setbacks in two courts. On the one hand, the Delhi Rouse Avenue Court extended his judicial custody till the 23rd of April. And all he got in the end was a later date for the hearing. The Aam Admi Party has been alleging political vendetta. But he's got no quick relief from the Supreme Court heater which is going through the matter quite procedurally, as it should. Let's debate. Two courts, one man. The focus was back on Delhi excise policy scam kingpin Arvind Kejriwal. It was another round of back-to-back -back setbacks for Arvind Kejriwal in two courts. On one hand, the Rouse Avenue court extended his custody till April 23rd. On the other hand, the Apex court refused an early hearing plea challenging ED's arrest. The Supreme Court gave the Enforcement Directorate time till April 27th to file its response to the ARP leader's petition. Likagate accused Arvind Kejriwal was arrested on March 21st, but his jail stay in Tihar will continue till April 23rd. While the Delhi court extended Kejriwal's judicial custody, Singhvi made some scathing submissions 
seeking an early hearing in the Supreme Court. During the hearing today, Abhishek Manu Singhvi, appearing for Mr. Kejriwal, told a bench of Justice Sanjeev Khanna and Justice Dipankar Datta he had facts to shock the conscience of the court. He also hit out at selective leaks all over the place to discredit the Chief Minister, an extremely short date to begin hearing the petition. The court, though, refused the plea. Earlier today, Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Maan also met Arvind Kejriwal in the Tihar jail. After the meeting, Maan claimed that Kejriwal wasn't given adequate facilities to meet his family members. Despite the Enforcement Directorate's kingpin tag and key conspirate attack on Kejriwal, Maan continues to decry the arrest, calling the Delhi Chief Minister Kattar Imandar. इनको महंगी पड़ेगी क्योंकि अरविंद केजरीवाल जो कट्टर ईमानदार है जिसने पारदर्शिता की राजनीति शुरू की बीजेपी की राजनीति खत्म की उनको ऐसे ट्रीट ट्रीट किया जा रहा है आम आदमी पार्टी जो है एक सोच का नाम है तो अरविंद केजरीवाल एक व्यक्ति को तो गिरफ्तार कर लोगे सोच को कैसे करोगे आम आदमी पार्टी हैज ऑल्सो अनाउंस्ड द फेज 2 ऑफ जेल का जवाब वोट से अक्रॉस फोर लोकसभा कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसीज ऑफ द नेशनल कैपिटल देखिए लोकसभा चुनाव को लेकर के ऑलरेडी सभी राज्यों में कैंपेन चल रहा है दिल्ली के अंदर भी जेल का जवाब वोट से कैंपेन शुरू हो चुका है आसाम के अंदर भी हमारा कैंपेन चल रहा है कुरुक्षेत्रा के अंदर भी हमारा कैंपेन चल रहा है अभी मान साहब का वहाँ रोड शो हुआ है फॉर नाउ देर इज नो रिलीफ फॉर दिल्ली का गेट क्यूज केजरीवाल इश्तिहार स्टे विल कंटिन्यू टिल अप्रैल ट्वेंटी थर्ड लेट्स डिबेट Well, with me this evening, I have King's Counsel, uh, former Solicitor General, India's topmost jurist, Harish Salve, with me. Uh, Mr. Salve, you must have been watching the situation, you know, as far as the Kejriwal case and Liquorgate case is concerned. Uh, first, uh, how are you seeing this case? I mean, are you, it's a bit of a setback in the Supreme Court today for Arvind Kejriwal. He's not getting any immediate relief. What are the issues which emerge legally and otherwise? Um, uh, I must start by telling you I have some degree of familiarity with the case. I have appeared for the, uh, I got bail for the uh, officer of Ricardo Perno who was arrested by the ED. Uh, but let's stay with facts and public record. I'm not surprised as a lawyer that uh, at the outcome of the case because of uh, what is in public domain in the judgment of uh, the Supreme Court in the Sisodia case. So I'm hardly surprised that uh, the court uh, has issued notice and will hear the ED. And um, I think it's a good message that nobody is above the law. Uh, a person who skips summons eight times, whoever he may be, uh, has to be viewed dimly, purely as a matter of, um, of, of a judicial approach. To grant of bail because uh, who, the basis of our constitution is however high you may be the law, law is above you. If each of us were to become judges in our own cause and decide whether we will or will not obey a summon or whether we will or will not obey an order of the court, then we are heading to anarchy. So we start from there and uh, it has gone on predictable lines as far as I am concerned. There is no, as far as the court is concerned, you can make whatever political allegations you want to make. But as far as the court is concerned, there is no decision in this entire string of cases which has really taken me by surprise. Uh, Mr. Salve, uh, the argument, first of all, has been made very strongly here that approvers mean nothing. Approvers amount to nothing. Even if the approver is someone you have worked with very closely, who is aware of the complexities of the case, they are saying approvers mean nothing. You can put pressure on anyone and make him or her an approver in the eyes of the law. That's a political argument made. That seems to be about 75% of the argument so far that the ARP is presenting of, uh, in, in Mr. Kejriwal's defense. It is true that uh, the court would view the evidence of an approver carefully. But that would firstly be at the stage where he's being made an approver. 
Secondly, Arunab, unlike uh, cases which are now argued on TV channels and on Twitter, in a court of law, the court would first see on what the approver has said. Let me, I don't know what the approvers have said in this case, but let me give you a, a theoretical example. Suppose the approver said, I met Mr. X at his house on so-and-so date at nine o'clock, which he earlier denied doing. And now he produces a WhatsApp message in a second phone, which he had not disclosed, which shows that he met the person. Will you discredit that evidence merely because he's an approver? If the approver says, okay, earlier I told you I have no idea. Now I'm telling you, here is a check, here is a bank account, here is a trace of funds which move from account A to account B. You go and see that the funds have indeed moved from account A to account B. You still discredit it just because earlier he had lied and said, I have nothing to do with this. So, you know, these generalizations that don't believe approvers. Yes, why does a person become an approver? Your first attempt is to run from the law. When that doesn't work, you realize the options against you are closed. Nirav Modi's sister has turned approver. Did she turn approver day one? No. Why did she support him in, uh, in trying to launder his money? She did as a sister. When, when the heat got too much, she said, okay, I turn approver. Because I don't want to go down for somebody else. So there are reasons and reasons why people turn approvers. And this kind of a broadside saying, just because somebody is an approver and made one statement earlier, now he's making another statement, is something which the court, I'm sure, considered and dealt with. Uh, the other argument, Mr. Salve, is that Mr. Mr. Kejriwal says he is not directly involved in the framing of the policy. The argument no. being made is simply uh, a little bit like saying, no. yes, there was a policy. The policy led to somebody profiting. The state exchequer did not gain much. Private people profited. Yes, somebody made 338 crores. But it means, it doesn't mean that I'm corrupt. Because there's no paper to prove that I was the one who was signing off on the decision. It doesn't matter if there are any number of people who come later and say I as chief minister had direct role in it. Because I'm a chief minister without portfolio. I don't sign off on things and hence there is no question of personal culpability. So, uh, Arnab, you, uh, there's one thing which I've noticed I was watching, once I was watching, in fact, your channel. Uh, let's not confuse between two independent offenses. Every time you hear the argument, where is the money trail? There are two independent offenses. One is corruption, the other is money trail. Corruption, prima facie, which the Supreme Court found in Sisodia is, to put it in one sentence, a 70 crore license fee you charge 70 crores license fee and you justified increasing the wholesale margin from 5 to 12 percent, saying that they have to pay 70 crores license fee. But in 10 months, those people who paid 70 crores license fee earned 500 crores. So they said, Prima Fasi, you acted in a manner which caused a loss to the state and a gain to a private person. That's corruption. Was this policy done it, it was a far-reaching policy. Was the decision taken without the involvement of the chief minister? Is, is for anybody to know. I, I, it's hard to believe, but uh, we don't know what the truth is. So, it, the second is, has the money which was taken as a kickback been found? It may never be found. But does it? It may, somebody who's being hauled up purely for moving funds around may get off the hook if the money is not found. But somebody who is guilty of corruption, because don't forget, under the Prevention of Corruption Act, it is not necessary to prove somebody received a bribe. It is enough if you show somebody acted in a dishonest manner. In the Sisodia. Sisodia, Chief Minister. All, in all the Sisodia case, in the, in the Justice, Justice Kanna. In the, that's right. Yeah. yeah. In if, the, you in notice, the, if you read in, that in the, carefully. In the Manish Sisodia bail order. Where he says there is no trail of money. The para but seven of the Supreme Court judgment, which denied bail to Sisodia. No, in, in para seven uh, of the Supreme Court judgment denying bail to Sisodia, it says, and I quote: "A conspiracy was entered vis-à-vis -vis the new excise policy to enable supersized profits for wholesale distributors in return for kickbacks and bribes." Now, the conspiracy part is understood. Kejriwal's point is that the bribe has not got into my bank account. Need not. You be. have, 
no specific evidence to prove that the bribe came to me. Maybe he got nothing. That's the point they're repeating ad nauseum. So th that's the that's the money laundering part. If he that, has pocketed the money, that becomes laundering money. In fact, he for him it would not even be laundering. He'd be the prime recipient of the bribe. So let me just explain to you and for your viewers, Arunab, let's get this clear. A is a government servant, B is a, B is a businessman, B corrupts A by giving him a hundred thousand rupees or a million rupees or a million dollars. B has taken a, a has taken a bribe from B. That's not money laundering. He has received the bribe. That's his offense. You may be able to show that A has commit A has done something to benefit B. And the law presumes that if you have acted dishonestly to benefit a private interest, money must have been paid. The reason why the law went beyond physical bribes to acts of dishonesty which benefit private interests is because common course of human conduct, you would do it only for a bribe. The money laundering comes later. So A receives a million dollars from B for doing an illegal act. A then gives it to C. And C, who has had nothing to do with this corrupt transaction, takes A's money and puts it in a property in his own name. C is giddy of laundering because what he's trying to do is he's trying to change the color of that money. So money laundering is different from corruption and corruption with the allegation which lies at the door of Mr. Sisodia. I assume that's the same allegation being taken that the chief minister and the deputy chief minister conspired to make this policy. If the chief minister says he had no role to play in a policy is of this magnitude. Is conspiracy a charge? Yeah, is, is conspiracy a charge, Mr. Salve, for the ED or for the CBI to look at? Both. In a case such as this, I'm reading. Both. Yes. Let me, let me give both? you uh, where, where it comes from. Yes. Let me, let me uh, the allegation is... Mr. Chief Minister, Mr. Deputy Chief Minister and one or two ministers conspired with a group of businessmen to come up with a policy very favorably, which will be very favorable to a group of people who will raise monies out of it. That's your allegation of corruption. Who all collaborated in that act, civil servants who were parties to that decision making are all conspirators of the act of corruption. Then comes the laundering. The money is, as the allegation runs, the money was paid by the wholesalers who made the bribe. They paid X, X paid Y, Y paid Z. Somebody had given an advance for some election. That got set off. That's the trail of money. Everybody who has touched that money and allowed it to move becomes guilty of an offense for money laundering. He may have no knowledge of where the money came from, just knowing that it, it has come from some naughty business in Delhi, but he helps in passing the money around. That's money laundering. So let's let's keep the two separately. Yes, ED is investigating the money laundering aspect, but that these are not, as far as the primary people are concerned, these are not in separate compartments. That's why Supreme Court refused by bail to Sisodia. So, you know, the courts seem to be pretty convinced of the evidence that they have. Uh, what do you think of what the High Court said when it said uh, that there is prima facie, the evidence is incriminating qua the petitioner? See, I'll tell you, the law, that was under the Code of Criminal Procedure, yeah, under our Code of Criminal Procedure, the police cannot grant you pardon. A pardon is granted by executive clemency. Approvership is where the police takes a witness to a magistrate the police officer steps out. He confesses to the magistrate. He tells the magistrate. The magistrate has to be satisfied. Prima facie that this is a genuine confession. He is being contrite. He is coming out with the truth. And taking him rather than prosecuting him. Taking him as a witness for the prosecution. Is, will, is going to help prosecuting a larger uh, group. For example, I mean, in theory, if Sisodia turned approver against Kejriwal, maybe the court may not allow it because he will say both of you, public interest demands both of you be prosecuted. But if a smaller fry in, in, in the whole process says, okay, I'll come out to the truth and tell you the truth, 
The court is the final arbiter of should the person be given pardon, treated as an approval, approver, so that he comes on as a witness to prosecute the main people in the conspiracy. Now, these are judicial decisions. These are judicial decisions. These are not taken in the ED head office. ED may agree to treat somebody as an approver, but it is the court who has to approve. That's why I think that some uh, Delhi High Court took uh, some umbrage of the vocabulary used against uh, the approver's statements. But but then, you know, if the court also, if the Supreme Court tomorrow does not deny, does not, uh, does not give bail to Arvind Kejriwal in this case, look at the situation that we have here. Mr. Salve, the court does not give uh, does not give bail to Kejriwal. Suppose the Supreme Court also takes the view that yes, there is a fair amount of evidence, and we cannot at this stage disregard the evidence. And if the evidence, as the High Court says, is incriminating uh, vis-a-vis Arvind Kejriwal, then the Supreme Court is unlikely to take a, take a different view. In that case, what's the lookout? I mean, Delhi is not going to have a Chief Minister. We're going to run the government from Tihar Jail. This is what the people of Delhi are looking at. And what kind of precedent is that setting for the rest of the country? Well, uh, I have only two comments to make, one serious and one humorous. If you remember back in the day, we used to have uh, the Yes Minister and the Yes Prime Minister series, which showed the battle between the civil servants and the politicians. And, and the civil servants, those were British civil servants, always maintained that the government would run much better if the minister stayed at home. So... Will Delhi run without a chief minister? I don't know. I mean, is, is the chief minister superfluous in Delhi? I don't know. Uh, secondly, I have heard this argument that there is no constitutional bar. Well, there is something called the silence of the constitution. Did the constitution makers ever contemplate that a popular leader who is found prima facie guilty of a serious offense would be in they would be denied bail and would yet want to govern the state. I don't think the founding fathers ever thought of this. That's why they didn't provide a detail. Of course, on conviction, you lose your seat. But what should be the position in the interim is a matter of personal conscience and propriety. I think you do throw it back well there. Mr. Salve, you've given some very solid perspective uh, on this case and uh, let's see what happens after the 23rd. Matter is going procedurally, but uh, this gives us some fresh perspective on this. Harish Salve, thank you very much as always for throwing light on this with me this evening. Thank you so much. That's Harish Salve, ladies and gentlemen. I would consider him the last word. He's speaking on issues of constitutionality, but also tonight he's spoken on issues of political propriety and morality. On the political debate this evening, Ajay Alok versus uh, Anmol Pawar, BJP versus AAP, uh, C. Anmol. Uh, there are serious issues involved. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously, even the Supreme Court will look at the evidence that is available and decide how to respond. If the case did not have any merit, then it would not even proceed procedurally right now. Uh, and you just heard Mr. Salve as well. You can hear me, Anmol. So, you know, last time I told you the High Court is pretty much convinced yes, yes, about I, the evidence against you, Kejriwal. Time has come for you to take a decision because, because public sympathy is not going to build up if the courts aren't going to support you. And the courts are showing no intention of supporting you yet. Arnab, uh, the fact is that Mr. Kejriwal is not named in the ECIR which in uh, criminal jurisprudence is FIR. No charge sheet has been filed. Even the trial has not commenced. There's no corroborative evidence. And Mr. Salve forgot to inform the viewers that approvers come into scene when there's dearth of evidence. There are hundreds of judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court. The Honorable Supreme Court, while granting bail to Mr. Sanjay Singh, categorically said that there's no trace of proceeds of money. Not a single penny has been recovered in last two years after more than 500 raids. And the second point, I was hearing him very patiently. And the second point which he uh, failed to inform the viewers is that the constitution framers did not even contemplate that there will be a so-called premier agency enforcement directorate 
which will work at the behest of Bharatiya Janta Party, which will work as a frontal organization of the central government. And without a shred of evidence, put a popular three times sitting chief minister. See, all of this is not working. The Delhi model of governance. All of this is not getting you any sympathy. Even this was not contemplated. No, no, all of this is not going to get you any sympathy. Louder, please. I can't hear you. See, all of this is not going to get you any sympathy. Ajayalok is on the debate right now. See, if the courts till now, my point being, Anmol, 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 yeah, see, Anmol, Anmol, I'll tell you one thing. Thus, the, you have thrown everything at the at at the court, every piece of evidence. Why are the courts not moved, Ajay Alok? The fact is, viewers, if there was any observation from the court till now saying that the situation Kejriwal has been dealt with unfairly, there isn't enough evidence, he should not have been arrested, the arrest was not necessary, or question the timing of the arrest, then the sympathy could have moved your way, but it's going in the opposite direction. Ajay Alok. Not at all, Arnav, not at all. Arnav, the problem here is, we used to know that there is a difference between Loud. thief and a politician. But a new chronology has been framed by Mr. Arvind Kejriwal that the politician can be a bigger thief than the normal thief. And it's a shameless blot on a democracy that a chief minister is not resigning even after being in jail for almost a month now. Within six days it will be a month and he has not resigned. So he has created a new benchmark in Indian democracy. Look, there are four P's in corruption. There are four important P's in corruption which a chief minister can enjoy and easily enjoy. First is power, preference, privilege and payment. And he has enjoyed everything. He had the power. He had the preference whom to give the legal contract to. He had the privilege of doing that and he had received the payment. The kickbacks are there, the, the evidence are there, everything is being nailed and then also this arm Arajak party shamelessly defends Arvind Kejriwal. And in the process, they have lost the entire credi credibility of theirs. Of course, they have been losing it for the last two and a half years. Because they are in over of corruption. The new, new ideas of corruption keeps on propping them. And look, this is only one. It's one, the liquor scam is only one of them. Now there's a jal board scam which CBI is already investigating. There is an inferior medicine scam, which is also being investigated. There is a knockery scam, which is also being investigated. Say everything, ye to kuch nahi hai ji. Hume phasaya ja raha hai ji. Hum to aise nahi hai ji. Kattar imandar hai hum ji. Aray ji, to wahi ji kehta tha. Bilkul hai ji, kattar imandar hai. Kattar desh bakt hai. Aap ki tarah desh bech nahi raha hai hum. अरे कट्टर बेईमान है आप लोग ये रहे आप कट्टर बेईमान है आप लोग कट्टर बेईमान ईमानदारी से आपका दूर दूर तक संबंध नहीं है करोड़ का घोटाला किया ईमानदारी से दूर दूर तक का संबंध नहीं है आप लोग उनकी आंखों में आंखें डाल के पूछो क्यों ने बात की मंदिर है जो राज्य सभा अपने ही बातें अपने ही बातें सुन लिया करो अपने ही बातें सुन लिया करो देश में एक ऐसा व्यक्ति आया है बोलते थे अपनी बातें सुनो मुफ्त शिक्षा शर्म आ जाएगी शीशा देखोगे शीशा टूट जाएगा और वर्ल्ड क्लास एजुकेशन प्रोवाइड की है शीशा देखोगे शीशा टूट जाएगा शर्म के मारे सपनों को पूरा किया है अरे वर्ल्ड क्लास एजुकेशन and you are teaching corruption to other India people who are running other states. These are new ideas of corruption. Utilize them. Arvind Kejriwal uh, is now uh, regularly Anmol, taking tuitions Anmol, in Bihar. Anmol, uh, Anmol, I new want to read out. For him. One second, one second. I just want to read out on my new Motorola Azar phone some Bharat Motorola tweets. Viewers, and let me read out a couple of the tweets. Uh, Anmol, one minute. Vijay, Vijay Nakhasi says it is essential for leaders to address such issues transparently and effectively maintain trust and integrity. Gurleen Kaur says, everyone on please. Gurleen Kaur says, everyone can be on please. Aap should stop showing Kejriwal as a martyr. Srinivas Reddy Gondesi says, Kejriwal, who once projected himself as a crusader against corruption, is himself allegedly charged for the liquor scam. He has no moral responsibility to hold his constitutional post as chief minister. It appears to be a lot of people moved by the views of Harish Salve earlier today.
and even Anmol should take a little bit of, you know, have a little bit of respect for the views that people like Harish Salve put your way. Sometimes it comes forth as advice. You should listen to it. Arnab, the question here is I'll now. Respond. Arnab, I'll respond. Please, Anmol, you have to learn Arnab, to I'll answer respond. questions. I am asking a question. You answer the question. Arnab, Don't try I'll to answer. make Suomoto comments. Listen. What? No, no, you don't know the question. You can't answer without listening to the question. You listen to my question and then ask. Listen to me very, very clearly out here. The question is, why was the Supreme Court not listening to you? The Supreme Court was not listening to you. Your lawyer, Abhishek Manu Singhvi, tried to get a shorter date. He said the same things that you said. The petitioner is not named in the ECIR. There were 16 statements, 10 by Sharat Reddy, 6 by others. One statement becomes positive. The same arguments. There is nothing new. Ajay, do you get my point? Every single point that is made by Anmol Pawar is a simple summary of the points made by Abhishek Manu Singh. My question to you is, why was the Supreme Court not moved by the arguments that were made by your lawyer Abhishek Manu Singh? Why was the Supreme Court not moved? Why did they not give a because shorter date? Why did they decline Singhvi's argument? Why are you not getting relief from the courts? Arnab, because uh, they think they have the propriety, have right to propriety, that how, how a faster date cannot be given. Secondly, by virtue of CM, being a CM, he thinks that he can surpass the law. By the Honorable and giving court, political statements in the court, notice. not based on the evidence-based statement. The matter is to be heard by 29 no of legal Israel and the Enforcement Directorate has to file a reply within two weeks. Let him, let him, it 50, was not 50, heard let on Maddox today. It will be heard on 29th of this coming month. And the fact is that same bench so, passed uh, similar observations while granting bail to Mr. Sanjay Singh. But the case, when it reached the Honorable Supreme Court on 2nd of March 2024, the entire case was demolished by the Honorable Supreme Court. The observations were made that if the Enforcement Directorate fights the case on merits, okay, next. then the Honorable yes. Supreme Court will be bound to make observations as per the mandate of Section 46 of PMLA Act, stating that even private I'll visa offence is not being made out. And they also very categorically so stated so that no proceeds of money has been traced and not a single penny has been recovered. And I think it is for Mr. Alok to answer. Your lawyer, that has, already, your court, lawyer has already said it in Mr. the court. I was hearing Mr. Salve very patiently. He, Arnab, Arnab, Mr. Mr. Salve just said that whatsoever amount has been reached to whosoever person, the ED must investigate and that is a part of money laundering. 60 crore rupees has been traced to Bharatiya Janta Party, which has been given as bribe by P. Sharad Reddy. Now, why is it that Enforcement Directorate is not arresting uh, J.P. Nadda ji? Why double standards? If there is a clear so proof, you reaching, where, if the data is published guns? by the SBI on the direction why you are of jumping the guns? Stick to Agarwal Kejriwal. Kejriwal. If the trace of money has Stick been Stick to the biggest uh, corrupt Agarwal Kejriwal. Then why is it that ED is not arresting the officials of Bharatiya Janata Party? The money trail has been established. Why such double standards? And your lawyer in the court said, "There, where is the money we have spent it in the Goa polls?" This is the statement made by your lawyer. Where is the money we have spent it in the go uh, in the gold in the Goa polls? And that's why, that's why Raghav Chadha is not coming back. क्या बात कर रहे हो? जरा law bites का पहले देख लो. Law bites का निकाल के देख लो. आप क्या वकील ने बोला? जवाब दे पाएंगे आप. क्षमता है आप में जवाब देने की सवाल की. मैं क्या दूंगा? जवाब आपको देने दे. इसकी बात आप मान लीजिए. उन्होंने कहा है. अगर एक भी पैसा किसी के पास जाता है. अनमोल, अन क्योंकि मैं मैं देखिए एक मिनट एक मिनट अनमोल अनमोल एक मिनट अनमोल मेरी बात सुनिए मैं अगला ट्वीट पढ़ रहा हूँ एक मिनट अनमोल ओके ओके सिवा कुमार दत्तू तड़ेपली सेस एवरीबॉडी ऑन प्लीज गवर्नमेंट कैन कांट बी रन फ्रॉम जेल द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन डिड नॉट क्रिएट एक्सप्लिसिट प्रोहिबिशन कीपिंग द ड्रैकोन Hence, it doesn't mean a normal civic life. Jail ruling can be allowed. Customary precedence is to resign. Customs are part of law. Absolutely. I, I agree with you, Shiva Kumarji. I think the conventions are created by the way the political parties respond in situations such as this. 
and dolly bhatia says never seen such shameless liars of aap def defending the indefensible anmol leave all this aside if the supreme court also says like the high court has said that there are prima facie strong evidence against kejriwal what will you do then i don't think the supreme court is going to view the evidence any differently from the way the high court has looked at it if the supreme court also makes the same observations against arvind kejriwal that there is prima facie evidence that he has been leading a conspiracy what will you do yes kya hoga louder no what what if what if the honorable supreme court says that on our directions a data was published and 60 crore rupees were transferred from the alleged kingpin of the liquor scam p sharad reddy to bhartiya janata party go and book mr jp nadda fir kya hoga fir aap kya kahenge how long will you avoid answering questions how long will you how long uh, let ajay respond to that it's a, and how I mean, long will the bjp spokesperson will how avoid how long can your party stop answering question. questions it's been more than 25 days is jp nadda the mastermind of liquor gate or is arvind kejriwal the mastermind of liquor gate who is the mastermind of liquor gate no 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 who is the mastermind of liquor gate no no jp who is the mastermind of liquor gate is the mastermind of liquor gate jp nadda didn't form the who is the mastermind dalali diya bhartiya janata party ko jawab dena ye jawab de aaj desh ko oh now you accept there was a liquor gate earlier you were not expect bhai sab sab ka jawab nahi doge hum puchte rahenge accepting We will expose each and every spokesperson of BJP. JP letter took the policy back. What expose? You are then you are fully new. Then why did JP letter take 60 crore bribe? You don't have any shame left. Sat crore don't have any shame left. You don't have any shame left. You don't have any shame left. जवाब नहीं है आपके पास. कोई शर्म नहीं बची. रोज expose होते रहते हो. जवाब है ही नहीं आपके पास. आप दे ही नहीं पाओगे जवाब. अरे थेथर हैं आप. आपकी सच्चाई देश के सामने आ चुकी. सर फोड़ने का कोई फायदा नहीं. आना लेट देर हिम स्पीक मोर एंड मोर. एक कट्टर ईमानदार, कट्टर देशभक्तार भी को. आपकी जेल की सलाखें ज़्यादा नहीं रखेंगी. How cheap they are. They are not political party. They are a corrupt company. They are a group of thugs. They are a group of thugs. Anmol, it is not going to work. Anmol, you are constantly giving yourself certificates. It will not work. Anmol, Anmol, you. I will call you back on the day the Supreme Court takes a decision on it. And if the Supreme Court also says that there is prima facie evidence against your leader Arvind Kejriwal, then you have to answer very differently. You cannot then start attacking the Supreme Court order. Also, your options would have run out. I thank you Anmol and Ajay. Ladies and gentlemen, I am now moving on to a very very important subject, which is the letter I have in my hand for the first time, a coalition of 21 retired judges from the Supreme Court and High Courts have written this letter to the Chief Justice of India. They have expressed serious concern over the mounting efforts in their view by certain factions to undermine the judiciary through orchestrated pressure, misinformation and public criticism. they allege that the motives behind these actions as being driven by narrow political agendas and personal gains aiming to erode public trust in the judicial system now viewers is there an attempt to undermine the judiciary the supreme court is coming under major controversy repeatedly and there are people who believe that there is a certain lobby of four or five or six lawyers supported by a group of the media who try to target and embarrass the judiciary and though of course the judiciary is never going to admit it it is possible prone at least to being i mean if not influenced it can get affected its judgments may not be affected but the idea is that let's put pressure on the judiciary let's undermine the judiciary let's get articles written uh, let the lobby of the media work against the judiciary and hope that builds considerable pressure on the supreme court judges now what is important about today's letter sohail and kapil are joining me right now what is important about today's letter are the signatories you see this controversy sohail has been brewing for a while is there an attempt at putting pressure on the judiciary but now it's very different it's not just citizens it's not eminent citizens ex bureaucrats or just top jurists former supreme court judges themselves are writing to chandrachur former high court judges and supreme court judges are writing to justice chandrachur saying that we a collective of retired judges from the supreme court and high court are taking this moment to write to you drawing upon our years of service and experience within the judiciary to express our shared concern 
regarding the escalating attempts by certain factions to undermine the judiciary through calculated pressure, misinformation and public disparagement. Suhail, this is happening at a time of elections. And we all know, I mean, let's not try to, you know, beat around the bush. The fact is that there is a pressure being built by certain members of the lobby as critical cases become before the Supreme Court. Whether it's the Kejriwal case, whether it be any other case, whether it's the electoral bonds case, build pressure, build criticism. If the court does not judge your way, say the court is not doing enough, target the Chief Justice. You know, it's, it's happening repeatedly, but now that former judges are writing about it, what's your thought? I think there's... Yeah, I what's your take? <coughs> so, a couple of views here. Number one, the undermining of the judiciary is reprehensible in any democracy, especially when you choose to denigrate them at a moment of your choice. I've often said when the government loses in court, we talk about democracy being back. When the government wins in court, we say, oh, my God, democracy in this country is over because this pillar has also collapsed. Number two, there's a lot of noise Arnab, on social media, which denigrates the judiciary, which almost seems to be like a herd mentality. It's mob lynching. There's nothing else. It's a lynch mob that has come up and about trying to tell judges that, oh, this is how we think of you. But the third point is even more important. This pressure is not from outside alone, Arnab Goswami. This pressure is from within the bar. This pressure is from a select bunch of lawyers who have no income, no work, except to abuse the judiciary every day. They talk about, they blackmail the judiciary, they denigrate the judiciary, they cast aspersions on its integrity and independence, and they get away because they are members of the bar. What do you do to that? And you know that their agendas are clear. Some people were part of one common man's party who are no longer part of that party, constantly abusing. You have former presidents of bar associations constantly abusing. What do you do about that? The fourth is that the government has in many ways allowed this nonsense to happen. And I'll explain to you how. Aam Admi Party or the incarceration of Arvind Kejriwal is a judicial matter. Every time they discuss the matter... And it is not in court. They say, oh, it's political vendetta. But for God's sake, the courts have extended his uh, incarceration. The courts have denied him bail. The courts have denied Satendra Jain bail. The courts have denied Manish Sisodia jail, uh, bail. The same court that threw the electoral bonds out. At that time, the courts were independent. At that time, the courts were full of democracy and de democratic values. But today, they are not. I mean, it's the goose and the gander story. It is tragic that we are allowing this farce to play out. And I'm delighted that the, the, the judges have written. What is sad is that for after a long time, you have an excellent Chief Justice of India in D.Y. Chandrachud. A man, a man of letters, a man whose integrity is unimpeachable, a man who is wise. For him to have to suffer and his brother and, you know, sister judges to have to suffer this Constant abuse is tragic and uncalled for in every which way. I don't know how this is going to stop. I'm glad you're doing a program or not. Is this because this is not about pressurizing the court? People don't want this to talk about, about it. You know the, the the problem also with the media. So hell, it is, is there anything which is freedom. That's around my around lawyers? Yeah, around yeah anything around the Supreme Court, lawyers, judges. The media also tends to sort of avoid it. Saying, let's not get into this area. We don't want to be seen to be speaking for or against the Supreme Court. But I consider it my responsibility to speak about it because, of course, pressure is being put. And then people like Kapil Madan or others will say, why are you assuming that the courts would come under pressure? I'm not assuming. I am assuming that there are attempts by certain groups to put pressure. I am not assuming that they will come under pressure. But that must not be denied. I can give umpteen examples of the same. And, uh, you know, we've... Yes, Kapil, you want to come in on it? Can you unmute yourself? Arav, let me just first decode this entire controversy and I will tell your viewers a quick sequence of events. 
when the electoral bond uh, bond judgment happened none other than you know mr adi shargalwala wrote a letter to the president seeking that you know this judgment should be set aside knowing fully well that this is not the procedure prescribed under the law not in the constitution on any of the you know law related books but then again he wrote a letter thereafter during the electoral bond uh hearing subsequently he again mentioned and he was reprimanded by the none other than you know honorable chief justice of india and he himself was the signatory of an identical letter which was earlier written by a group of lawyer including mr hari salve who was there on your show you know at 9 pm and also this letter was supported by none other than our honorable prime minister because he himself tweeted so now tell me one thing even a uh, you know anyone anyone looking at the sequence of event would know that this letter is been orchestrated by none other than the incumbent central government because the honorable i Prime think you should take that back no i mean if you're reason, trying to say that hari no salve and me, justice uh, deepak verma Anna, former supreme court judge Anna, justice krishna morari former I supreme court am, judge am, justice Anna, dinesh maheshwari former Anna, supreme unfair. court judge Anna, justice mr shah Anna, justice mr shah is former it's supreme unfair. court judge a part of an orchestrated attempt I mean, I it's think unfair. I think you're it's running unfair. foul of decency, it's man. Unfair. Yes. No. Arnab, 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 no, no. You, it's unfair of point. you to I say the former Supreme Court judges are part Arnab, of a conspiracy. Arnab, I know that. I am. Know uh, you that. are. I am, you know. I am. I am. I am. You know, decoding <laughs> this entire fallacious, you know, premise of this debate. And now, let me tell my, you know, second argument. Now, I would ask one question. I heard one of the signatory of this letter, you know, Justice retired S N Dhingra, who. you know very clearly said when the honorable judges made a reference in a patanjali case that i will rip your apart though it was an oral observation he said that the judges are not acting partial partially so you know and he mentioned that the judges should act impartially so by this letter what you are trying to portray it this letter writing of this letter is in itself is an exercise to create this kind of a narrative against you know the judiciary but i must tell you that our judiciary is independent our judiciary no, how is the letter is, is the letter aimed at creating a narrative against the judiciary kind of, i i'm sorry I, I, kapil because you will not end i will come in and i will have to lower your fader kind of for a while the you know the point is, is and, the and point is one minute uh, uh, kapil 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 you will have to be brief thank you kapil you will have to be brief see listen I think you should support the letter. Anmol should also support the letter. See, Anmol, I'll tell you why. Whatever you case you have, for example, Audio. you as an Arvind Kejriwal, the courts are absolutely clear about which way they stand. And eventually, Anmol, can you hear me? I am saying eventually the courts will go by merit. What anybody says or doesn't say does not matter. or what is published in a few legal websites does not matter the judgments of the court have lasting significance so anmol have you read this letter yeah i can't hear you can you unmute yourself i can't hear you at all i don't think he can hear the fact that he needs to unmute himself so it's a double whammy yeah yeah i don't think he can hear me Anmol, have you? Can you hear me, Anmol? I'll try once more, Sohel. Anmol, no, can you hear me? No, you said language. No, you said language. No, no. I think I think he's not trying to avoid it out there. Point being, I think Sohel, we are. I I think yeah. There's a problem with the connection. You see, language. viewers, uh, this is a very serious matter. No, no. But Sohel, uh, if if uh, if Supreme Court judges uh, are themselves my, uh, writing, uh, uh, see, if Supreme Court it. judges, Sohel, stop it. It's too funny. <laughs> if supreme court judges have them, themselves started writing to justice chandrachur saying don't come under pressure obviously all of these former supreme court judges judges of mumbai high court former judges of delhi high court rajasthan high court jharkhand high court punjab and haryana high court alabad high court uttarakhand high court supreme court of india all of them are people of tremendous experience and they are trying to ring fence because they know that you know lawyers and jurists and others associated with aam aadmi party or your supporters will try to put pressure they are no, trying to ring fence kapil, the supreme court take, under against that kind of pressure anmol so let's take kapil badan's point on board let's imagine Anab, whatever I, kapil said is no let's get anmol's response and then hear from you another fact right 
based on central government advice. Arnab, Let's imagine that is Arnab, true. the fact is that out of 23,790 sitting Badan judges and 50,000 retired judges and out of 20 lakhs advocates, I, have, uh, I just got to know that some 21 judges, uh, honorable see, judges and few advocates language, have written a letter. But I must say that the Honorable Supreme Court is capable enough to withstand any pressure and any media trial. So I Very think it's right. not a matter of concern. We have full faith in the law pressure. of the land. That's and full it. That's it. No, no. So, so, well, so that is an admission. So, no, no, now, no. You put the pressure and then you Kapil say the Supreme Madan, Court should be strong Kapil enough Madan's to withstand point, it. So well, last word. No, no. Kapil Madan's point that, oh, the central government has weighed in and all that, to my mind is a bit, whether it's true or not, to my mind it's a bit far-fetched because these are not people who would want a sinecure or want something from the government. I don't think Harish Salve either has the time or the influence over these people to say, okay, all you guys write a letter. Let's imagine if all that had happened. I want to ask two questions. Number one, as the gentleman from Aam Aadmi Party said more courageously than I'd imagined, would you want the judiciary to be undermined in the manner it's being undermined? Do you really fr feel proud to be an advocate in this judicial you system of India where day in and day out people are manipulating the judiciary a uh, couple, tell me, do you really believe that a very I senior think... lawyer who I have a lot of respect and time for? Suhail, Suhail, are you questioning the wisdom of Honorable for Chief him? Justice of India? One minute. Do you think he'll succumb under pressure you. of few advocates? Are, I'm not talking to you. When I when I need your advice, I'll write No, but you. answer my question now. Nah. No, no, I'm speaking to Kapil. Yeah, I'll come closer. to you later. I was the one who signaled you. You seem to be start. rattled. So don't stop. Now, let me just tell you one last thing, Kapil. No, but I, uh, you heard what I was, Mr. Kapil Sibyl said. The voice was not clear. Full court. Kapil Sibyl said, this is not going to be remembered as the golden period of the judiciary. That's what Kapil Sibyl said. You know that there have been enough discussions about the Supreme Court, about the Chief Justice, about judges. There have been innuendos in, on social media that, oh, if this bail is before a particular lady judge, that bail will be denied. Do you deny that this is going to dent the judiciary? Simple question. Oh, let me so let me let me let me make a very clear and a very you know simple answer. No, no, no. Arnab, you must I not allow. To, I have to close. To I have to close. I have to close. I'm totally to short of time. I'll come back to that. Uh, no, no. I think I think the letter. I'm going to put it out on uh, republicworld.com. You can take it forward from there. Viewers on the other side, the big story over the weekend has been the Iran versus Israel escalation of conflict. We have voices from the ground when I'm back. Kane, sir, your dinner. On a tile? And it's antibacterial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scratch resistant also. But plates? Kane, by. It's a tile lad. Uh, I am plus technology, Simone. World class tiles. Tile ho, the simple ho. In just a decade, India has transformed into a digital powerhouse. From classrooms to clinics, farms to finance, digitalization is revolutionizing every aspect of life. To celebrate the makers and shakers behind Digital India and India's phenomenal digital yatra, Republic Business is delighted to bring its inaugural Republic Business Emerging Tech Award. Kane, sir, your dinner. On a tile? And it's antibacterial. Mm hmm. Easy to clean. For plates? Kane, by. It's a tile lad. Uh. I am plus technology, Simone. World class tiles. Tile ho, the simple ho.
Tonight, Iran launched a large scale of coordinated attack on Israel. The regime in Iran fired a massive swarm over 200 killer drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles towards the state of Israel. Together with our allies and partners across the region, we are operating at this very moment to defend Israel from Iran's attack. So far, we have intercepted the vast majority of incoming missiles by Israeli systems. So far, we have intercepted and are continuing to, inter to intercept dozens of attack drones as well as cruise missiles and ballistic missiles outside of Israel's border. A number of Iranian missiles fell inside Israeli territory, cause, causing minor damage to a military base with no भ्रष्टाचारी कान खोल करके सुन ले ये मोदी नहीं आया 140 करोड़ देशवासियों का भ्रष्टाचारियों के प्रति गुस्सा निकल करके आया है साथियों ये मोदी से इसलिए नाराज है क्योंकि मोदी आज देश के गांव गरीब के साथ चट्टान की तरह खड़ा है Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand, brings you the latest breaking news updates from across the country, only on Republic TV. And I am Rakshita Mishra. Ghoshna Patra mein Modi ji ne kaha hai hai ki hum poore desh mein UCC ko lagu karai. पूरे देश में विधानसभा और लोकसभा के चुनाव एक साथ कराए जाएंगे वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन जमीन पर लाएंगे From the Delhi studios of Republic TV, it's time for the debate. Arnab Goswami on the debate at 10, powered by Reva University, Policy Bazaar, Kuchina. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time now for the nation's sharpest opinion. The world is on edge, ladies and gentlemen. Israel says it will extract a price from Iran when the time is right. America has increased its deployment and moved troops to the Middle East. Iran's attack on Israel, whether in retaliation of the attack on its consulate in Damascus or in retaliation towards a trigger they have waited for, has destabilized the entire region. As I see it, this is a significant moment because Iran, which has through time since its establishment as the Islamic Republic of Iran in 1979, never got into a direct escalation with Israel. And in that case, this is a first. But to think that Netanyahu will not go with the advice of his war cabinet to respond, to think that he will cave in despite the US being very proactive since the attack is also hoping against hope. He's also under political pressures, domestic pressure. My view is that there will be an Israeli response in some form. But the larger concern is whether this moment will trigger a World War III. 
because let's remember both World War I and World War II began as regional conflagrations between nations. World War I was between two kingdoms before becoming a full-blown international conflict. My view is that we cannot rule out an escalation. We have to watch extremely closely because on both sides are very, very militarized and very, very determined nations. Let's take a look. Iran launched an unprecedented attack on Israel. It fired around 350 projectiles at Israel, bringing in a new phase of tension, uncertainty and confrontation in the Middle East. The attack was in response to a suspected Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus earlier this month. اینه که قدردان ارزش اقدام مسئولانه و متناسب جمهوری اسلامی ایران باشند و به جای انتخاب الفاظ و عبارات نامتناسب Hours after the attack, 17 Indians on board Israeli linked vessel were captured by Iran. Yesterday night, uh, I spoke uh, to my Iranian counterpart. Uh, we, we are uh, making the, uh, the point to the Iranian government that uh, these people should be released, that they should not be detained. You know, I, I would absolutely press for these people to come back to India. Israel has accused Iran of spreading terror. On Saturday, the Iran itself uh, took, uh, you know, overtook a Portuguese boat. Uh, and on that Portuguese boat, because it's an international trading route, there are 17 Indian sailors on it that are now being held by Iran. They're terrorizing the region. They're terrorizing, you know, other countries as well. India shares deep strategic ties with Israel and Iran for decades and it has been able to balance between the two sides. Israel happens to be one of the biggest defense suppliers to India. The partnership between the two countries has upscaled ever since Prime Minister Modi came to power. On the other hand, India's relationship with Iran is older. The Islamic nation, one of India's prime oil supplier. Is the Israel-Iran war a new headache for India? Is India caught in the middle again? Let's debate. I have uh, with me the deputy spokesperson of the Foreign Affairs Ministry of Israel uh, Alex Gandler with me to start tonight. Mr. Gandler, in this case, how do you view things panning out? Uh, you know, your, your technology has been very effective against the Iranian missile attack. But, uh, you know, the Iranians are unlikely to let go. Uh, they are also a very determined nation, very militarized. Uh, what options are you looking at if you were to look at the next one week or two days, two weeks, for example? Well, first of all, Arnab, uh, Shalom from Jerusalem. Um, yes, I'm standing here on uh, on my balcony, to be honest. I'm standing here exactly where I stood on Saturday morning at around 1 uh, in the morning, 1.40 in the morning, uh, looking upwards at the sky and seeing projectiles shot over Jerusalem. Uh, this was definitely an escalation, the first time ever in uh, the history of the relations between Israel and Iran, and we did have uh, good relations in the past prior to the Islamic Revolution, uh, that Iran has launched uh, an attack, a direct attack from its territory uh, to Israel. Luckily, uh, we are protected by layers of defense and also by layers of strategical diplom diplomatic defense uh, with our partners uh, internationally and uh, regionally. 
looking at the future, we're keeping all our options open at the moment. Uh, we are listening to all sides. We're talking with our American friends who are a strategic pa- partner. Uh, and we're thinking about, uh, uh, how we should respond to this. A response will be needed, uh, because such an attack is unprecedented. Uh, not only for Israel, this is probably the largest, uh, bombardment of aerial drones and ballistic missiles on any country. 300 altogether. Some of them, uh, very large ICBMs. Uh, so such an attack cannot go unchallenged. Uh, two follow-ups. Uh, first, Alex, you are saying that this cannot go unchallenged. But the Iranian attack was in response to the Israeli airstrikes, destroying the Iranian embassy's consular annex in Damascus. Uh, I think that happened on the first and they, it killed or wounded everyone inside. So Iran says that this bombardment of theirs is only a response to the April 1st airstrike. So in a way, it's 1-1. One, one. Why take this further? Well, first of all, I can't comment or or relate to any such bombardment. Uh, From my understanding, it wasn't uh, a consular annex. As someone who has served in diplomatic missions abroad, I'm very well aware of how you uh, describe a consulate or an embassy. From my understanding, that building uh, was a uh, a building that wasn't part of the Iranian embassy. Uh, uh, Neither... uh, uh, but one one is not something that uh we're counting uh i don't think that any nation across the world would have uh, uh stood still if its uh land was targeted with 300 missiles drones icbms cruise missiles and so on uh this is an unproportional response or attack by iran um by the way in the past if we're mentioning diplomatic missions please allow me to uh talk a bit about history. Uh, in 1990, Iran d- bombed uh, the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires. Um, in the 2000s, uh, most uh, Indian viewers might probably remember uh, the explosion in one of our diplomats' car, injuring his wife, who is uh, receiving treatment to this day. Uh, in 1994, the explosion of the Amiya building in Buenos Aires as well. And in 2012, uh, explosion that killed Israeli tourists, uh, in Bulgaria, the, all carried by Iran and its proxies, uh, Hezbollah. Um, Alex, do you think Israel is taking on everyone together? You have a situation, you know, already, uh, vis a vis the situation in Gaza. You have an escalating and long drawn, uh, response from Israel there. Now you're taking on Iran. They say that in conflict, you should not take on all your enemies and potential enemies in one go. But that's what Israel seems to be doing. Yes, first of all, you're right. Uh, Opening many fronts is strategically against what Clausewitz said. And I think many generals understand that as well. But let's analyze this for a second. Are we opening different fronts or is it the same front? When we're talking about Iran, uh, the way Iran has been operating since the Iran-Iraq war, uh, their strategic understanding was not to fight a war on their soil. Hence, the, they developed a strategy of using proxies. So let's talk about the Middle East and what surrounds Israel. Uh, to the north of us in Lebanon, we have Hezbollah. Uh, to the uh, east, Syria and Iraq, we have Hezbollah and Hezbollah, uh, Tahrir and other factions. You have them also in Afghanistan and Pakistan, where Iran is uh, operating proxies. Uh, Houthis in Yemen and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas are also funded by Iran in Gaza. So uh, if there is a war and there has been a cold war with Iran for many decades now, it has become a bit warmer. Uh, the fact that they have decided to bomb Israel uh, and shoot all those rockets at us is just an escalation on their part. Uh, we're not looking at uh, different uh, uh, fronts. We're talking about one front, about Iran, and it's not just Israel. Uh, you saw probably uh, that uh, during Saturday, a coalition of nations stood up to Iran and what it is doing. It's not just against Israel. What we're seeing is something, uh, belligerency against the entire world. We are just the victim of this specific action. 
But at the end of the day, the destabilization is all around the world. Uh, you've spoken about uh, the ship that was uh, captured by Iranian special forces carrying 17 Indian sailors and much more. Houthis attacking Indians, yes. ships uh, passing next to Yemen and so on and so forth. This is uh, Iran waging a war against many nations, not just against Israel. Uh, Alex, thank you very much. We'll keep following up from Republic. Thank you very much. That's Alex Gandler, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm also joined by General Bakshi right now and uh, Colonel Jonathan Conricus of the Israeli Defense Force, IDF. Along with them is uh, Fatemi Karim Khan, senior journalist live from Tehran in Iran, and Baba Kherawi, journalist and political analyst of the Middle East and Iran. He's joining us from Los Angeles. Uh, Babak, if I can start with you, you heard uh, the deputy spokesperson of the Israeli Foreign Ministry saying there that, uh, that Iran is opening up fronts. It's much more than it seems. It is not a response to the April 1st attack. He seems to suggest that this is uh, the Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthi, everybody and their, uh, whoever they were proxies for coming out in front and taking on Israel directly. Uh, Babak, where do you see this going and your response to what you may have just heard? Uh, hi to everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. What is happening right now is the, is another scene of a play uh, that began 45 years ago. This is nothing new. Every other year, some such clash through proxies to different countries in Argentina, here and there, has been going on. And the problem at this moment is not Iran, but this is the Islamic Republic regime running the country in Iran. See what I mean? If we cannot separate these two elements, we will never get to the right response at this moment. Any coalition at this time, join to uh, come together, put all the efforts together, can topple and overthrow such regime which in its own last election, the turnaround was almost 5%. See what I mean? Is an unwanted child. If they can do that without even shooting a missile, without even killing a person, we can bring peace back to the Middle East. This is what, how I look at it. Okay, Babak, uh, uh, before I go to Colonel Jonathan Conricus, uh, Fatimi, 350 missiles and drones fired on Israel. Iran says this was a retaliation to a single attack in Damascus. But the scale of the attack has surprised people. Is Iran looking at a full-fledged war? Does Iran see itself as the leader of the Muslim world? against israel of course not yes of course not nobody here nobody looking for a war nobody here looking for a war please be careful about your words we are not the nation who is looking for a war we didn't start anything here it was the israeli army who, who destroyed a building who destroyed a diplomatic building who killed several of iranian people outside our country, outside Iran. It is not, a, there is not, uh, there isn't, it is not a problem of uh, who they are working for or what was the names or what was their, their relation to the government. They killed some of Iranian nationality people. And they, there should be a revenge. There should be a reaction. There should be a, a um, an answer. There should be a reaction to these kind of things. Uh, we cannot uh, just sit uh, here and see what they are doing against our people. Our uh, uh, Islamic Republic government is not something um, uh, something um, against Iran against Iranian people. It may do something that we do not like here or there, but it has a rule. It has a. Uh, it is. Um, it is. The, it is the. It is the definition of a government to protect their people. And if Israeli 
if Israeli people are not happy with what is happening in the in their country, they have to uh, they have to show this. They have to go uh, and uh, show their uh, their disagreement with this uh, politics. No, oh, I'm just surprised at the scale of the response. Colonel Jonathan, let me draw you in here. Why do you think Israel has come out in the op uh, Iran has come out in the open directly? So far, of course, there were the prox proxies, the Hezbollah, Houthi. They were working through proxies, but now there's a direct attack. Uh, what what is the what is the strategic intention here? And what is is Israel going to say? Okay, we are going to hold ourselves back, or is it going to wait for timing? Can it afford to escalate it further? and take on everybody at the same time. Right. Thank you for having me. So those are two distinct uh, questions. I'll start with the second one, with what Israel is going to do. I think what Israel is going to do is respond uh, at a timing, location, and uh, intensity of Israel's choosing. It doesn't have to be immediate, and it doesn't have to be against specific targets. Uh, Israel has a very wide and diversified toolbox when it comes to dealing with Iran. Up until now, yes, we have been fighting their proxies. The Iranians very cowardly have been sending forward Palestinians, Lebanese, Yemenites, Syrians, and what have you in order to fight against Israel. Uh, we are still busy fighting them, by the way. And I can tell you that I myself was surprised that the Iranians actually found the courage to step out of the convenience of the shadows and actually attack Israel straight on. Their attack was a failure, and we were able to successfully defend and intercept more than 99% of all of the incoming missiles, drones, and rockets that were fired from Iran, which I am not sure that the guest from Iran is aware of, because this is being censored in Tehran by the oppressive media, or the oppressive regime against the media. But bottom line is that I think that we are we will see in the imminent future, not maybe tonight and not maybe tomorrow night, an Israeli response because obviously such an attack against Israel cannot go unchecked, especially not when it's from a regime that for 44 years have been chanting and forcing their people to chant death to Israel, death to America, death to the UK. I don't know if they've been saying bad things about India as well, but I know for certain that it's been a lot of death wishes to other countries. Of course, we cannot let this slide and we must respond to this type of aggression. Uh, uh, General Bakshi, where do you see this going forward now? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Arnab, there has been a paradigm shift in the situation in the Middle East as the other uh, speakers have very rightly highlighted. So far, Iran was fighting through its proxies, the three H's, uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis and the Shia militias in, Sir uh, in Syria and Iraq. Now it has uh, chosen to fight directly and uh, from what we learn from Iranian sources, they are saying it is in retaliation for the attack on their uh, consulate compound in Syria where uh, you know a number of their top military officials have been killed, total 11 have been killed in that particular strike. And therefore, they wanted to sort of, uh, you know, the United States did a lot to try and deter them, to make them recalculate, recalibre. You know, the uh, the American Central Command Chief, uh, Corilla, he personally came down to Israel. Another aircraft carrier was sent in to deter Iran. The fact is, Iran has not been deterred. And about 320 to 350, there are various estimates, some 170 drone strikes, Shahid class. Then there were the cruise missiles, about 35, and then there were about 120 uh, ballistic missiles which have been launched. Uh, Iran says it has struck the two air bases from where uh, the Novavim air base in southern Israel, from which it claims that Israel had launched the air attack onto its embassy. So that base has been hit and they are claiming the major damage. The Israelis tell us that the damage has been very slight. One girl, I understand, poor girl has been killed and about uh, 12 people wounded uh, total in this strike, right? It came in three waves. The Israeli air defense was superb. It is one of the best in the world 
and it was aided by the Americans and the British and the French who used their fighter aircraft to shoot down the drones as they came. Israel claims that the drones were just a decoy and they uh, have hit the targets that they wanted. They got through despite these defenses and they are saying that 1.3 billion dollars have been spent by Israel in this defense whereas they have spent very little in, reta uh, in uh, turn. But they are saying they have finished and the next move is on Israel. Now to my reckoning Israel will respond though the Americans are putting heavy pressure. Let's be quite straightforward. They do not want Israel to escalate. They are saying you were able to shoot down 97 to 98 percent of the projectiles and therefore you should take it as a victory and call it off because if you uh, give a retaliatory strike there will be uh, follow-up strikes from Iran. And once this escalatory spiral starts there is no saying where it will end. It's extremely dangerous, very, very dangerous situation there. And therefore, uh, you know, like our external affairs ministers just spoke to you, there is need for calm, there is need for patience. Uh, I personally think Israel will retaliate because of its own public opinion uh, pressure. But uh, that uh, based upon American pressure, no, but that may take a covert but, form. They have done covert attacks uh, earlier. Onto yeah, Israel. but you know they have done the stuck but, but, attacks but, but on their General Bakshi, facilities. General, and General Bakshi, fact, but yes, General Bakshi, I yes. think, I think, I think what uh, what Iran is not clear about, and Fatima, don't mind my saying it, you are on very uncertain ground here. And and Fatimi Karim Khan in Tehran, I, I'll bring in my own take here. Fighting a proxy war and fighting a real war are very different. You, as a country, you are experts at fighting proxy wars. Everything for you is a proxy war. Hezbollah is a proxy war. Your support to the Hezbollah is a proxy war. Your support to the Hamas is a proxy war. You may have been celebrating when the 7th October attack happened on Israel. It was a proxy war. Israel did not attack Tehran, but Tehran was behind the attack on the 7th of October. What you are doing by encouraging piracy in the open seas with the Houthis, one minute, with the Houthis is a proxy war. You tell the Houthis to fire ballistic missiles at Israeli resorts, you, you tell the Houthis to capture ships. Even the Indian Navy had to respond once or twice and three times and teach the Houthis a lesson. My point being to you, Fatih Mahaji, is that you are using Syria, you are using Hamas, Houthi, Hezbollah, but you are not fighting a war yourself. Now you are saying we will fight the war ourselves. Are you ready because your first attack on Israel has failed? So I'm, I don't know I, whether I it will work and I want you to tell Babak, for example, uh, I, I, why, I why you would, no, clear. you know, this Sir, is your proxy, I am everything is yours. I am not a spokesperson for the Every Iranian government. I am not a spokesperson for anyone. I just spoke yeah, but, a, a professional journalism yeah. idea here. So I'm not speaking about what Iran is going to do or what it had, had done before. What I'm saying is, Iran as a country has every right to protect its people outside and inside the country. We have seen several terrorist attacks from Israelis inside and outside are you, Iran against are you, our scientists. Against are you protecting our your people by are you are you are you protecting your people by one minute? I'll get Babak Harabi into this. Ababak is Iran protecting its people by supporting the Hamas, by supporting Absolutely and financing the Houthis, not. by supporting Absolutely piracy in the open not. seas. They are killing their own Baba people. Kharavi, they responding are, to Fatemi. They are starving their own people by just sending the hard-earned currency to all these terrorist groups from Africa, uh, Boko Haram. Call, name it, Kataev. In, in, in Iraq, there are three types of, of these groups. Uh, uh, and Najaev and Kataev, whatever. You go to Yemen, 
you go to Syria, war in Syria was financed by the Islamic Republic. Okay, there is a reason when the inflation in Iran right now at this moment is over 10,000 percent. What is the reason? Because all the hard-earned money is being pumping through all the channels to the terrorists to purchase, to buy arm, to buy like ammunition, to buy all the equipment, explosives, and kill innocent people. It's as simple as that. There's nothing around it. Islamic Republic is not protecting its citizens. You cannot blame Iran for whatever happened in and outside the regime. It is not, it, there is not, it, Iran is not responsible for whatever terroristic a, attack inside and outside. It, that's okay, that's maybe what she said. That's not time. the reality. There is some time. That's not the reality, ma'am. Just... No, no, no. This is a regime's propaganda you're repeating. This is a parrot style. No. When Iran is financing Basim Soleimani, was the head of financier of all the terrorist groups in uh, Iraq. All Shia Muslims, when your own minister said, uh, at the time of Saddam Hussein, we just purchased thousands of bombs. His interview is out there. And we distributed all over southern Iraq before the war. This is terrorism. This is spreading terrorism. This is bedding for terrorism, for killing are innocent people. Speak about the, the, are we going to speak about what is happening right now between Iran and Iran? Right Israel, now, or we are going right to now let me tell you. Why do you go to a consulate? You tell me what is a consulate. Why a person would go to a consulate to obtain visa, to get legal help, to get uh, help to go back to his country, etc., etc. What are whatever, eight high-ranking IRGC no generals right are doing in that people the country. What, what are they doing there? What are they cooking there? Is, For is it what the reason is... Syria is let, not let, let country, me, let me finish. Sorry, let me finish. Let me finish. You are not answering. For whatever the reason, Iranian nationalities are outside the country or inside. For whatever reason, no other country has the right to Hold kill on them. A second. Do you know what IRGC stands for? IRGC. Do you know what what does it stand for? Huh? Islamic Republic Guard Corps. There is no Iran in it. Okay. IRGC, the moment established, its name is Sepahe, Pastoran, Engelobe Islam. The debate no is Iran. not about Iran. Not even history. in the name. The how, debate how is not about Iran. Iran. I'd Iran. I'd like to, let me just get in Colonel, Colonel Jonathan in this, please. Colonel Jonathan, if I, can, if I can get you into this now. Colonel Jonathan, Colonel Jonathan, we were waiting for, I mean, the world is waiting for the situation in the Middle East to settle down. And this is going to cause a lot of global concern. Therefore, the Americans will put in pressure as well. This is not good for the global economy if this conflict truly escalates and spins out of control. So have the Americans managed to convince you to pull back a little? You can make the statements but not take it any further. Yeah, um, I think that uh, sometimes, you know, when you have a bad tooth, uh, you need to endure some pain in order to get it out. And the fact that you're going to endure some pain with the dentist doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It is a necessary minor evil in order to deal with the bad situation. And in this metaphor, the bad situation is Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, its actions, its state sponsoring of terror, its belligerent activities across the entire Middle East, specifically against Israel, but not only in Israel, overturning local uh, regimes in Iraq, uh, strifing uh, sectarian violence in Syria and in Lebanon, and fueling civil war in Yemen, and of course funding terrorist organizations in Gaza. So the fact that many people prefer quiet now, I think, you know, when you have, when, when there's a problem, when your tooth is aching, you don't want quiet. You want to take care of the issue and you want to make sure that it doesn't become any worse. That's where we are now. That's where Israel is. And for all of the people who are saying, telling Israel that you must or that you should exercise caution and restraint, we have been extremely restrained for decades. 
For 44 years, the uh, mullahs in Iran have been screaming death to Israel. And for many decades, they have been arming and equipping terror organizations against us. Many Israeli civilians have died at the hands of Iranian weapons provided to uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, and others. And I think that enough is enough. Israel needs to break free of this a noose of terror organizations that Iran has funded and placed along our borders. And it is high time that we take the opportunity now when finally Iran has summoned the courage to step out of the shadows to actually confront Iran. There are many targets in Iran and there are many things that Israel can do. And what I would think that Israel will be doing is either going after the nuclear program or going after Iran's capacity to, to continue to fund these malign terrorist activities across the Middle East, so as their sourcing equipment, for instance, ports where uh, oil is uh, exported from and petrochemical products are exported from, by the way, violating international sanctions. Um, and maybe that will be a target. But whatever happens, I do not think that Israel will let this slide. Whatever countries and organizations and even our closest friends will tell us and ask us to do, I think that once Iran fired 350 rockets and missiles, we cross that Rubicon and this aggression must be met with a firm, clear Middle Eastern response. Well, this, this uh, without doubt uh, is going to escalate. Uh, viewers, for those thinking of this as new, look at it another way. What is happening now is only a formalization of what has been a battle ongoing between Israel and Iran. It is just that Iran has worked through proxies so far and now it is coming out in the open. But when it does, governments and militaries get involved, so it takes on a very different dimension from when Iran can blame it on non-state actors. Viewers, I'll take a quick 30-second Securite commercial break. See you on the other side. Thanks to all my guests. Thank you. Kane, sir, your dinner. On a tile? And it's antibacterial. Mm hmm. Easy to clean. But plates? Kane, by. It's a tile lad. Ah. I am plus technology, Simone. World class tiles. Tile ho, the simple ho. You can sell. पता नहीं क्रिकेट का फ्यूचर कैसा होगा पर सीलिंग फैंस का फ्यूचर पता है बिकॉज इट्स ऑलरेडी हियर ओरिएंट एरोस्लिम विथ रिवर्स रोटेशन मोड जो इंप्रूव करे एयर सर्कुलेशन ओरिएंट पीएलडीसी फैन द फ्यूचर वेलकम बैक लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन अ पाकिस्तानी अंडरवर्ल्ड डॉन हु किल्ड Indian national Sarabjit Singh in jail was assassinated by two unknown gunmen, completely unknown gunmen in Lahore on Sunday. He was attacked by the motorcycle-born unknown assailants at his home in the Islampura area of Lahore. While the motive behind the shootout remains a mystery, Pakistan has squarely blamed India, calling it a targeted killing. Take a look at the development so far before our last debate on the unknown gunmen who have killed this terrorist. Eleven years after Indian prisoner Sarabjit Singh died in Pakistan jail after being brutally assaulted by prisoners. Amir Sarfaraz Tamba accused in the murder of Sarabjit Singh was shot dead by unidentified gunmen in Lahore on Sunday. उन्होंने पापा पे उस टाइम पे हमला करके उनको बुरी तरह से घायल कर दिया था जेल में उसके बाद उनकी वहां पर मौत हो गई थी पाकिस्तान की जेल में ही उनमें से एक जो शख्स था उसको कल गोलियों से मार के उसकी हत्या की गई है कुछ मीर सरफराज जिस पे मैं यही कहना चाहती हूँ कि जैसे हम कहते हैं कि कर्मों का फल यहीं पर ही मिलता है ये उसके कर्मों का ही फल है लेकिन इसके साथ ही मुझे लगता है एक बहुत बड़ी साजिश भी है ये पाकिस्तान की ही सरकार की तरफ से क्योंकि ऐसे हो सकता है बहुत सारे राज हों 
जो उनको लगता हो कि बाहर ना आ जाए दुनिया के सामने तांबा वॉज अ क्लोज एसोसिएट ऑफ लक्शर एबा फाउंडर हाफिज सईद सोर्सेज से तांबा एंजॉयड ऑल फेसिलिटीज ड्यूरिंग हिज जेल टर्म Pakistan has blamed India behind the attack on Amir Sarfaraz. मैं कल इंडिया में देख रहा था एग्जैक्टली इस तरह का इंसिडेंट हुआ हुआ है वहां तो इतना बड़ा हमने नहीं देखा कि उन्होंने उसको एग्जैक्टली इसी तरह का इंसिडेंट हुआ है आप देख लें मैं आपके साथ वो शेयर कर लूंगा क्लिप लेकिन हमने उसको 15 दिन से 10 दिन से उसको इतना बड़ा इशू बना दिया कि क्या हो गया This even as the world has rejected Pakistan's claim. I've uh, been following the media reports about this issue. We don't have any comment on the underlying allegations, but of course, uh while we're not going to get in the middle of uh, this situation, we encourage both sides to avoid escalation and find a resolution through dialogue. Why is Pakistan shifting the blame on India for alleged targeted killings? Let's debate. Uh, Sundus Mustaqeen is a Pakistani journalist from Islamabad taking on God of Arya. Uh, Ms. Mustaqeen, can you uh, can you tell us why the Pakistani terrorists, uh, the Pakistani criminals, are in the middle of these gang wars these days? You know, one gang killing another gang, one gang member killing another gang member, one terrorist killing another terrorist. We have seen increased killings by terrorists of terrorists. So, how do you analyze this? Why is this happening? you see um, thank you for having me in your program and you said terrorists are killing terrorists is this making any sense when we say terrorists are killing terrorists if this is the case this is the i was i would say the lucky case ever uh, if terrorists has been killing terrorists i think we are accusing and blaming india and it's not just pakistan who is blaming india of killing people in uh, in our country but actually four countries including pakistan the us and the canada and even the great britain all these four countries are accusing and blaming india for the target killings you know they the canadian prime minister uh, is on the same view the uh, uh, us state department is on the same view even the investigation are going on in uk as well right it's not only pakistan is blaming india for these killings actually so three you're other different that, countries in you're saying that we are no, no, but you know you have no proof according to the you international have, you have, media there is no proof people, of this There is, there is, there is, Sun, Sundusji. There is, there has to be some, there has to be some, there has to be some proof behind this, this new theory that you are putting out. Every day coming up with a new the theory that India is involved in killing this person. Ram Singh has said this with so much of confidence. Actually, at one time, at uh, on the uh, at one side, your uh, foreign minister has been denying, and on the Please. other side, on the flip side, your uh, defence minister Rajnath Singh is uh, is was on the same way with so much of confidence. The CSP no, no, are killing, and we will keep on killing uh, no, no, people no, no, in, inside the country have, and Pakistan. Have, have, so I think no, no, he has so not said that. Let me let me let me tell you. Let me tell you. One one minute. One minute. One minute. Right. Rajnath you Singh has said Rajnath Raj, 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 uh, Singh he has said no 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 Sundar ji Rajnath Singh ji has said ki hum ghar mein ghus kar marte hain exactly hum marenge Gaurav will explain he said hum marenge uh, yeah Gaurav can Gaurav can explain ek minute ek minute ek minute even your pm has said that india is not having so much power means indirectly he is predicting that yes we can do that yeah. he is admitting actually that yeah. yes we can do that and it's yeah. not admitting yes. actually yes we can do that yes Yes, we can do that, and we have no, done it. We have. Canada, I'm not going to Great Britain. No, we All have. Are saying the we same. have done it, but. 2019, India is on uh, the. Uh, so I if, mean, if you are saying that. It's shifting. It's moved towards the target killings of either uh, Sikh so, leaders so you, or so, Pakistani so-called terrorists so or you, whatsoever. No. So India is now habitual of killing people, and USA, I don't Pakistan, know. and whatsoever. You know, the Khalistan Tehreek. Uh, India is. killing people sick sick leaders in usa and even the new york and you just denied when it comes to it so it's all right if you if you if you feel this way i have a sundar ji sundar ji if you feel this way if you if you genuinely feel this way i'll i'll pass it on to gorov to respond to you dekhiye dekhiye ye to koi do rai nahi hai sundar ji gorov bhi aapko kahenge ki hum kehte hain ki ye naya bharat hai hum hum marte hain हम घर में घुस कर मारते हैं नया भारत है हम अप्रोच है अप्रोच है कि हम घर में घुस कर मारते हैं जैसे हमने बालाकोट में मारा हमने मारा 
आप नहीं नहीं मगर ये मगर ये जो छोटी मोटी घटनाएं आप क्या हो रही है उसके साथ हमारा क्या लेना देना गौरव विल रिस्पॉन्ड टू यू गौरव गौरव उस्मा करदार ऑफ द पी एम एल एन इज ऑल्सो देर यू नो यू वुड यू लाइक टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू दिस व्यू ऑफ द पाकिस्तान इज दैर वी आर किलिंग देर टेररिस्ट ऑन देर सॉइल no and uh, i don't think we are killing anybody and whatever action we have taken this ghar mein guske marna it relates to bhala yeah. and the surgical strikes that is point number 1 point number 2 have you realized one thing very funny correct that is point number uh, harjit singh nejjar dies uh, and as very rightly brought out by the pakistani panelist you know everybody gets very offended that india has you know india has done it india has done it india has done it everybody but when the americans are asked about the pakistanis 20 pakistanis getting killed the americans say we have no comment so basically in the world nobody cares if pakistanis die have you noted this the american spokesperson said we don't know anything about this we don't want to comment one canadian citizen dies everybody is very conscious though they don't yeah. have proof till now so many months have passed but justin trudeau has not offered 1% proof he should have given the proof he should have so called quote unquote yeah. exposed india in front of everybody yeah you see they should have done it and the pakistani should do it but they are not doing it but 20 yes, pakistanis sir, get killed yes, madam just hold on madam just hold on allow me to ma'am you should not interfere when you were speaking i kept quiet so ma'am have a little bit of manners ma'am this is an indian tv channel not a pakistani channel hold on so essentially what has happened is no don't do this it's coming to you right now hold on so what has happened is in pakistan's case when the american spokesperson was asked you know what are your comments the pakistanis are saying according to this guardian story that the so indians have so called killed 20 pakistanis and he said i don't care nobody cares about dead pakistanis i mean even pakistanis don't care about dead pakistanis they are creating a hue and cry about 20 pakistanis killed more than 80000 pakistanis have been killed by pakistanis in terror attacks and they don't care so arnab this is just a sham you can ask both the ladies on the screen it's just a sham this is just pakistan's excuse of asking money from india in the end they last they last money hum chup ho jayenge aap thoda sa paise de dijiye abhi shahbaz sharif gaya tha wahan pe bhik mangne ke liye saudi arabia they would end up asking money or not that is their national expertise ye ek hi kaam mein fit hai ye log paisa mangne ke ye mangne wale hai bas kahi aapke show mein na mangne mujhe dar lag raha hai aap pooch lijiye arnab agar chahiye to madam aap se baat kar raha hu main i'm talking to arnab arnab is the anchor of the show i'm talking to arnab ma'am i i want to bring in uzma kardar i i want to bring in uzma ji one minute i let me bring in uzma ji uzma ji see making allegations <coughs> against india that we are killing your terrorists i was speaking to the foreign minister about a week back the indian foreign minister and he said and he rightly said he said who are these people who pakistanis are complaining are being killed inka bio data kya hai in what is their profile who are they are they businessmen are they diplomats are they bureaucrats or are they all terrorists this is something uzma ji you must also think about you see everyone in the world is asking you you are going around the world saying that you've killed our terrorists you've killed our terrorists nobody is responding to you first of all therefore my first point which i want you to respond is there is no moral argument here you can go to london you can go to ottawa you can go to auckland and say our own terrorists hamare apne jitne terrorist hain unko koi maar raha hai to log to aapko kahenge jo bhi maar raha hai unko aapko thank you kehna chahiye magar aap complain kar rahe hain ki hamare apne terrorist jinko humne panaah di jinno ko humne itni support di itni training di india bheja wapas laaye khilaya pilaye unko maara ja raha hai तो लोग आपको कहेंगे यू शुड बी थैंकिंग पीपल योर बिगेस्ट प्रॉब्लम उजमा जी टूडे इज टेररिज्म तो हुएवर इज किलिंग योर टेररिस्ट आई एम नॉट सेइंग देयर इज वन पर्सन वन इंडिविजुअल वन कंट्री वन कंपनी बट यू शुड बी ग्रेटफुल टू देम बट यू आर नॉट इवन ग्रेटफुल यू आर कंप्लेनिंग दैट्स पॉइंट नंबर वन पॉइंट नंबर टू एंड यू कैन रिस्पॉन्ड टू बोथ यू आर सेइंग वी आर बिहाइंड इट इफ यू से दैट वी आर बिहाइंड इट यू हैव टू कम टू अस यू हैव टू गो थ्रू द डिप्लोमेटिक चैनल्स you have to file a proper complaint send it through the diplomatic channels take it through the bureaucratic channels let it go through the police channels and the investigative channels it may take about 10 20 years but we'll get back to you jaise aap karte the na jo 26 11 ke baad ki aap hame respond kijiye hame information dijiye hum believe me we will get back to you maybe not in 2024 by 2034 2044 2054 2054 we will respond to you but you must have belief in the system 
है ना सो फर्स्ट थिंग फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हाई डोंट यू थैंक द पीपल हु आर किलिंग योर टेररिस्ट एंड सेकंड व्हाई डोंट यू टेक इट थ्रू द प्रॉपर चैनल्स ओके या सॉर्ट ऑफ फॉर द मोमेंट यस यस फॉर द मोमेंट यू नो द इंडियन साइड इज नाउ सो फ्रस्ट्रेटेड दैट दे जस्ट वांट टू पाइल द ब्लेम ऑफ एवरीथिंग दैट गोस रॉन्ग इन देयर ओन कंट्री ऑन अदर पीपल यू पीपल शुड एक्चुअली वरी अबाउट योर इमेज इन द वर्ल्ड इंटरनेशनली everybody is now saying that india is exporting terrorism uh, in different parts of the world and you have justin trudeau in canada you have the us uh, uh, officials in the in you the are state so department delusional. they have uh, uh, justice trudeau on the floor of the parliament has said that uh, we will not allow anybody to hit uh, any of our citizens on our own soil and ajit singh and uh, uh, other uh, you know six have been targeted uh and uh, you people have not cooperated in any kind of investigation uh and, and you have not even uh, uh you know cooperated in the us uh, 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 uh plan to assassinate a us citizen uh, in uh, on their soil uh, the state department wanted you to uh, cooperate in investigation and they said that we have uh, uncovered an assassination plot which you people uh, made which raw made in in uh, in 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 the us but you guys are totally you know you have your uh, um, head uh, you know under the sand and you are totally denying the export of terrorism in pakistan this has been going on for years now it's been going on for decades your uh, what about kalbushan who was kalbushan where was he found and what was he up to so uh, you know this is the nev there they have been about 20 targeted killings uh, and we have uh, 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 the the same pattern we see now in amir tambal's death also targeted, targeted killings of killing. whom targeted no 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 uzma ji uzma ji uzma ji let me let acquitted. me put the question uh, to you that the honorable foreign minister was, uh, was asking me And he said or not next time you are with a pakistani panelist you ask them who are these people and you have said 20 targeted killings uzma ji can 20, you tell me the bio data can I you tell me the, the bio data the, of the these the 20 the eminent citizens recent ones there who are these 20 people who, uh, who was from uh, who was the leader of jaish mohammad in who? dashka he was uh, uh, you know uh, uh, he was uh, he was accused of uh, accused of the patan court incident he was targeted and then <laughs> are you are supporting a jaish e mohammad terrorist in my program you are you are you are a, you are supporting a jaish e mohammad terrorist in my program even if he is dead you should not support him have the guts even if he is dead you should not support what we have to say also you are you are supporting the jaish e mohammad you and to major gorov Now you listen to what Why we are doing have to this? say. Why are you doing this? In June 2021, there was a car bombing outside the residence. I'm just surprised that you're supporting a terrorist group so openly. And there were multiple casualties there. Multiple casualties there. And Rob was uh, involved in, in, in that as well. So we have evidence. We have evidence. The point is that you people, you people keep denying. You people don't cooperate. Uh, uh, we are ये, very very sure there is an investigation going on our interior minister may had a press conference ye apne ghar mein bachcho ko bolte hain ki bada ho ke tumhe usama jaisa banna hai and we have to see we we, uh, we feel that, that is the uh, there is a the problem with them there is a problem with pakistanis on on wrong they are involved in his killing as well that is why iran khan on the floor of the parliament called osama bin laden shaheed you should ask them let's let us inke let us have to answer to the whole world inke it's not inke just heroes hain that you have to answer to you have to, to answer to all the other countries something. where you are carrying out these uh, terrorist why were you in fetr you are killing why were you in fetr center why was your country in fetr four times please answer my question all over the world different countries are brand why were you in fetr आप तो कहते हैं एक बार और डालो 
आपको तो मजा आने लगे टेररिज्म से चार बार थे की नहीं हाँ या ना अरे भाई वो आप लोगों के प्रोपेगेंडा की और बहन मत करिए हाँ या ना बोलिए हमें जाके लॉबी करते हैं आप खरीदते हैं लोगों को जाके बाय और उसे ये कितना झूठ बोलते हैं पाकिस्तान के खिलाफ एवरीबॉडी नोस दैट कौन है पाकिस्तानियों की जो अपने बच्चों से झूठ बोलते हैं अपनी गलत हिस्ट्री पढ़ाते हैं अरे सब झूठ बोलते हैं आपको झूठ बोलते हैं झूठ कैसे खिलाते हैं आप लोग उसे झूठ बोलवाते हैं लेकिन आप देख लें अपने ट्रैक में जो किया है आप लोग चार बार आप ह्यूमन राइट्स वायलेट करते हैं पूरी दुनिया में लेकिन आप लोगों को पता चलेगा आप ह्यूमन राइट्स का जो कमेटी है उसके रिपोर्ट पढ़ने जाते हैं आपको पता चल जाएगा क्या आप इंडिया का वहां पे नॉन टेररिस्ट फेस फेस क्या है एवरीबॉडी नोस पाकिस्तान इज अ टेररिस्ट कंट्री चार बार ग्रिलिस्ट में ओह नो 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 दैट इज दैट इज समथिंग व्हाट डू यू मीन दैट 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 कम बैक दैट क्या क्या मतलब है यू नो डायरेक्टली टू इंडिया नाउ द होल वर्ल्ड ओसामा बिन लादेन ओसामा बिन लादेन शहीद है कि नहीं है does not Osama bin Laden shaheed hai ki nahi hai in 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 any Osama other country Osama bin Laden shaheed hai ki nahi hai they do not violate Osama bin Laden shaheed hai ki nahi hai of any other sovereign country Osama bin Laden shaheed hai ki nahi hai that is doing it Osama bin Laden shaheed hai ki nahi hai Osama bin Laden shaheed hai उमा जी उमा जी उमा जी उमा जी उमा जी हम हम विश्वास करते हैं मेरी बात सुनिए उमा जी गौरव 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 सुंदोष जी उमा जी दिल्ली में हम ऐसे कहते हैं दिल्ली में दिल्ली में हम हम दिल्ली के लोग ऐसे कहते हैं उमा जी आपके हम घर में घुसकर मारेंगे उमा जी उमा जी हम घर में घुसकर मारेंगे जरूर मारेंगे अपने समय से मारेंगे खूब मारेंगे जैसे करोगे तो वैसे करोगे यही हमारा अप्रोच है नया भारत हमारा नया भारत है अभी आप आप हम कितनों को मारेंगे कब मारेंगे सोच सोच आपको मैं वो लेडीज एंड जेलमैन लेडीज एंड जेलमैन पाकिस्तान पाकिस्तान एक्सट्रीमली कंसर्न एक्सट्रीमली कंसर्न अबाउट द suspicious killings of terrorists on its soil we don't know which unknown people are carrying out these unknown killings it is all completely unknown i'll see you tomorrow at 9 good night and goodbye In the India Today Best Universities 2023 survey India's number 1 ranked universities in various streams are JNU Delhi Amity University Ames Delhi IIT Delhi and National Law School Bengaluru Kane sir your dinner on a tile and it's antibacterial mm -hmm. easy to clean but plates Ken bhai it's a Thailand I am plus technology se bane world class tiles tile ho to simple ho In just a decade India has transformed into a digital powerhouse from classrooms to clinics farms to finance digitalization is revolutionizing every aspect of life to celebrate the makers and shakers behind digital India and India's phenomenal digital yatra Republic Business is delighted to bring its inaugural Republic Business Emerging Tech Award Kane sir your dinner on a tile and it's antibacterial mm -hmm. easy to clean but plates Kane bhai it's a Thailand I am plus technology se bane world class tiles tile ho to simple ho
पता नहीं क्रिकेट का फ्यूचर कैसा होगा पर सीलिंग फैंस का फ्यूचर पता है बिकॉज इट्स Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand, brings you the latest breaking news updates from across the country, only on Republic TV. And I am Rakshita Mishra. Keen sir, your dinner on a tile. And it's antibacterial. Mm-hmm. Easy to clean. But plates? Keen by. It's a Thailand. <laughs> आई एम प्लस टेक्नोलॉजी से बने वर्ल्ड क्लास टाइल टाइल हो तो सिंपल हो इन दी इंडिया टूडे बेस्ट यूनिवर्सिटीज 2023 ट्वेंटी थ्री सर्वे इंडिया नंबर वन रैंक यूनिवर्सिटीज इन वेरियस स्ट्रीम्स आर जे एन यू डेली एमटी यूनिवर्सिटी एम्स डेली आई आई टी डेली एंड नेशनल लॉ स्कूल बेंगलुरु Are it's antibacterial. Mhm. <laughs> Scratch resistant also. But plates? Can buy. It's a Thailand. From the Delhi studios of Republic TV, it's time for Arnab Goswami on the debate. Good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen. Is that Arvind Kejriwal has not got any immediate relief in the Supreme Court of India. But rather this entire matter is going through you know the process. The ED has been given a notice there will be a reply from the other side and now what has happened is effectively the Supreme Court has denied any quick relief for Arvind Kejriwal. I think the matter is unlikely to be resolved soon. The prospect therefore of a longer time in jail for Arvind Kejriwal is a certainty. In my view Delhi at this stage with Kejriwal in jail and continuing in jail for some time at least needs an interim chief minister. Delhi cannot operate in an arbit way. Delhi cannot have nobody in charge and Delhi cannot be run from Tihar jail. the moral argument of trying to look like a martyr the moral argument of trying to look like a martyr by being a chief minister from jail will not help the people of delhi but more importantly across the country it will set a terrible precedent what if the chief ministers of many other states of the country larger states are all in jail if kejriwal does not come out of jail for 6 months for example Will the government run like this for the rest of the year as well? Personally, I don't think the center will disturb the situation or thrust the imposition of president's rule. Therefore, this is rather a question the courts must take up. And since the courts take up so many issues anyway, Suomoto, they should guide the nation on whether running a government from jail is a precedent that we, the people of India, should live with. Debate number one tonight, viewers. 
absolutely no relief in liquor gate for arvind kejriwal his judicial custody gets extended i have harish salve joining me on that debate as well i have a full debate on it salve is joining me right on top of the show at 9 pm tonight and as retired judges and lawyers make explosive claims and tell the chief justice of india not to come under pressure what's the real story surrounding the supreme court of india what kind of pressure is being put on the country's highest court and how is the country's highest court responding to it former solicitor general ranjit kumar is joining me on the debate at 9:25 at 10 o'clock tonight the world on the edge amidst growing concerns over the escalation in the iran israel conflict that debate is at 10 p.m. tonight ladies and gentlemen and sarabjit killer is shot down on pakistani soil divine providence but pakistan accuses india's intelligence agency of being involved that's at 10:30 p.m. and here are the headlines this monday evening on the debate tonight three din pehle chhatra mein declaration wala kaam pura kar to jo नेगेटिव अनुमानों के आधार पर सारा जी ट्वेंटी घसीटने की कोशिश होती मैं इसको किसी भी हालत में चौंका देना चाहता प्राइम मिनिस्टर टेक्स ऑन द वेस्टर्न मीडिया लॉबी सेज इंडिया डज नॉट नीड टू बी लेक्चर्ड ऑन डेमोक्रेसी कांग्रेस को पूछना चाहिए कि तुम्हारी क्या मजबूरी है ये सनातन के खिलाफ इतना जहर उगलने वाले लोगों के साथ तुम क्यों बैठे हो भाई डीएमके का तो जन्म शायद इस नफरत में पैदा हुआ होगा प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी शार्प रिटोर्ट टू सनातन बेटर्स सेज द डीएमके वाज बोर्न आउट ऑफ हेट्रेड फॉर सनातन नो रिलीफ फॉर लिकर गेट अक्यूज अरविंद केजरीवाल एंड के कविता एज द जुडिशियल कस्टडी गेट्स एक्सटेंडेड till the 23rd of april we found that this was a very disturbing trend that you, uh, whenever decision comes against you you try to pressurize the court so that next decision is in your favor for the first time ever judges unite against the lobby call out attempts to pressurize the judiciary in another letter to the chief justice of india india gets access to indian crew on board seized israeli ship in iran as jay shankar dials his iranian counterpart and sarabjit killer shot down on pakistani soil but pak accuses india's intelligence agency of being involved in the killing Ladies and gentlemen Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal or the Aam Aadmi Party cannot wash away the liquor gate taint against his name anymore Today the jailed Delhi Chief Minister suffered back to back setbacks in two courts On the one hand the Delhi Rouse Avenue court extended his judicial custody till the 23rd of April and all he got in the end was a later date for the hearing The Aam Aadmi Party has been alleging political vendetta but he's got no quick relief from the Supreme Court either which is going through the matter quite procedurally as it should let's debate two courts one man the focus was back on delhi excise policy scam kingpin arvind kejriwal it was another round of back to back setbacks for arvind kejriwal in two courts on one hand the rouse avenue court extended his custody till april 23rd on the other hand the apex court refused an early hearing plea challenging ed's arrest the supreme court gave the enforcement directorate time till april 27th to file its response to the aap leaders petition liquor gate accused arvind kejriwal was arrested on march 21st but his jail stay in tihar will continue till april 23rd while the delhi court extended kejriwal's judicial custody singhvi made some scathing submissions seeking an early hearing in the supreme court during the hearing today 
Abhishek Manu Singhvi, appearing for Mr. Kejriwal, told a bench of Justice Sanjeev Khanna and Justice Dipanka Datta he had facts to shock the conscience of the court. He also hit out at selective leaks all over the place to discredit the Chief Minister, an extremely short date to begin hearing the petition. The court, though, refused the plea. Earlier today, Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Maan also met Arvind Kejriwal in the Tihar jail. After the meeting, Maan claimed that Kejriwal wasn't given adequate facilities to meet his family members. Despite the Enforcement Directorate's kingpin tag and key conspirate attack on Kejriwal, Maan continues to decry the arrest calling the Delhi Chief Minister Kattar Imandar. ये जो चीज है ये बहुत ही इनको महंगी पड़ेगी क्योंकि अरविंद केजरीवाल जो कट्टर ईमानदार है जिसने पारदर्शिता की राजनीति शुरू की बीजेपी की राजनीति खत्म की उनको ऐसे ट्रीट ट्रीट किया जा रहा है आम आदमी पार्टी जो है एक सोच का नाम है अरविंद केजरीवाल एक व्यक्ति को तो गिरफ्तार कर लोगे सोच को कैसे करोगे आम आदमी पार्टी हैज ऑल्सो अनाउंसड द फेज टू ऑफ जेल का जवाब वोट से अक्रॉस फोर लोकसभा कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसीज ऑफ द नेशनल कैपिटल देखिए लोकसभा चुनाव को लेकर के ऑलरेडी सभी राज्यों में कैंपेन चल रहा है दिल्ली के अंदर भी जेल का जवाब वोट से कैंपेन शुरू हो चुका है आसाम के अंदर भी हमारा कैंपेन चल रहा है कुरुक्षेत्रा के अंदर भी हमारा कैंपेन चल रहा है अभी मान साहब का वहाँ रोड शो हुआ है फॉर नाउ देर इज नो रिलीफ फॉर दिल्ली का गेट केजरीवाल Well, with me this evening, I have King's Counsel, uh, former Solicitor General, India's topmost jurist, Harish Salve, with me. Uh, Mr. Salve, you must have been watching the situation, you know, as far as the Kejriwal case and Liquor Gate case is concerned. Uh, first, uh, how are you seeing this case? I mean, are you, it's a bit of a setback in the Supreme Court today for Arvind Kejriwal. He's not getting any immediate relief. What are the issues which emerge legally and otherwise? Um, uh, I must start by telling you I have some degree of familiarity with the case. I have appeared for the, uh, I got bail for the um, officer of Ricardo Perno who was arrested by the ED. Uh, but let's stay with facts and public record. I'm not surprised as a lawyer that uh, at the outcome of the case because of uh, what is in public domain in the judgment of uh, the Supreme Court in the Sisodia case. So I'm hardly surprised that uh, the court uh, has issued notice and will hear the ED. And um, I think it's a good message that nobody is above the law. Uh, a person who skips summons eight times, whoever he may be, uh, has to be viewed dimly, purely as a matter of, um, of, of a judicial approach to grant of bail because uh, who, the basis of our constitution is however high you may be the law, law is above you. If each of us were to become judges in our own cause and decide whether we will or will not obey a summon or whether we will or will not obey an order of the court, then we are heading to anarchy. So we start from there and uh, it has gone on predictable lines as far as I am concerned. There is no, as far as the court is concerned, you can make whatever political allegations you want to make, but as far as the court is concerned, there is no decision in this entire string of cases which has really taken me by surprise. Uh, Mr. Salve, uh, the argument, first of all, has been made very strongly here that approvers mean nothing. Approvers amount to nothing. Even if the approver is someone you have worked with very closely, who is aware of the complexities of the case, they are saying approvers mean nothing. You can put pressure on anyone and make him or her an approver in the eyes of the law. That's a political argument made. That seems to be about 75% of the argument so far that the ARP is presenting of, uh, in, in Mr. Kejriwal's defense. It is true that uh, the court would view the evidence of an approver carefully. But that would firstly be at the stage where he's being made an approver. Secondly, Arnab, unlike uh, cases which are now argued on TV channels and on Twitter, in a court of law, the court would first see on what the approver has said. Let me, I don't know what the approvers have said in this case, but let me give you a, 
a theoretical example. Suppose the approver said, I met Mr. X at his house on so-and-so date at nine o'clock, which he earlier denied doing. And now he produces a WhatsApp message in a second phone, which he had not disclosed, which shows that he met the person. Will you discredit that evidence merely because he's an approver? If the approver says, okay, earlier I told you I have no idea. Now I'm telling you, here is a check, here is a bank account, here is a trace of funds which move from account A to account B. You go and see that the funds have indeed moved from account A to account B. You still discredit it just because earlier he had lied and said, I have nothing to do with this. So, you know, these generalizations that don't believe approvers. Yes, why does a person become an approver? Your first attempt is to run from the law. When that doesn't work, you realize the options against you are closed. Nirav Moody's sister has turned approver. Did she turn approver day one? No. Why did she support him in, uh, in trying to launder his money? She did as a sister. When, when the heat got too much, she said, okay, I turn approver. Because I don't want to go down for somebody else. So there are reasons and reasons why people turn approvers. And this kind of a broadside saying, just because somebody is an approver and made one statement earlier, now he's making another statement, is something which the court, I'm sure, considered and dealt with. Uh, the other argument, Mr. Salvi, is that Mr. Mr. Kejriwal says he is not directly involved in the framing of the policy. The argument no. being made is simply uh, a little bit like saying, no. yes, there was a policy. The policy led to somebody profiting. The state exchequer did not gain much. Private people profited. Yes, somebody made 338 crores. But it means, it doesn't mean that I'm corrupt. Because there's no paper to prove that I was the one who was signing off on the decision. It doesn't matter if there are any number of people who come later and say I as chief minister had direct role in it. Because I'm a chief minister without portfolio. I don't sign off on things and hence there is no question of personal culpability. So, uh, Arnab, you, uh, there's one thing which I've noticed I was watching, once I was watching, in fact, your channel. Uh, let's not confuse between two independent offenses. Every time you hear the argument, where is the money trail? There are two independent offenses. One is corruption, the other is money trail. Corruption, prima facie, which the Supreme Court found in Sisodia is, to put it in one sentence, a 70 crore license fee you charge 70 crores license fee and you justified increasing the wholesale margin from 5 to 12 percent, saying that they have to pay 70 crores license fee. But in 10 months, those people who paid 70 crores license fee earned 500 crores. So they said, Prima Fasi, you acted in a manner which caused a loss to the state and a gain to a private person. That's corruption. Was this policy done? It, it was a far-reaching policy. Was the decision taken without the involvement of the chief minister? Is, is for anybody to know. I, I, it's hard to believe, but uh, we don't know what the truth is. So, it, the second is, has the money which was taken as a kickback been found? It may never be found. But does it? It may, somebody who's being hauled up purely for moving funds around may get off the hook if the money is not found. But somebody who is guilty of corruption, because don't forget, under the Prevention of Corruption Act, it is not necessary to prove somebody received a bribe. It is enough if you show somebody acted in a dishonest manner. In the Sisodia. Sisodia, Chief Minister. All, in all the Sisodia all the case, in the, in the Justice policy. Kanna. In the, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. In if, the, you know, in the, if you read in, in that the, carefully, in the Manish Sisodia bail order, where he says there is no trail of money. The so, para seven of the Supreme Court judgment, which denied bail to Sisodia. No, in, in para seven uh, of the Supreme Court judgment denying bail to Sisodia, it says, and I quote: "A conspiracy was entered vis-à-vis -vis the new excise policy to enable supersized profits for wholesale distributors in return for kickbacks." and bribes. Now, the conspiracy part is understood. Kejriwal's point is that the bribe has not got into my bank account. Need not. You be. have no specific evidence to prove Need that the bribe came to me. Maybe he got nothing. That's the point they're repeating, ad nauseum. So, th that's, the, that's the money laundering part. If he that's has pocketed the money, that becomes laundering money. In fact, he, for him, it would not even be laundering. He'd be the 
prime recipient to the bride. So let me just explain to you and for your viewers, Arunab, let's get this clear. A is a government servant, B is a, B is a businessman, B corrupts A by giving him 100,000 rupees or a million rupees or a million dollars. B has taken a, A has taken a bribe from B. That's not money laundering. He has received the bribe. That's his offense. You may be able to show that A has commit, A has done something to benefit B. And the law presumes that if you have acted dishonestly to benefit a private interest, money must have been paid. The reason why the law went beyond physical bribes to acts of dishonesty which benefit private interests is because common course of human conduct, you would do it only for a bribe. The money laundering comes later. So A receives a million dollars from B for doing an illegal act. A then gives it to C. And C, who has had nothing to do with this corrupt transaction, takes A's money and puts it in a property in his own name. C is giddy of laundering because what he's trying to do is he's trying to change the color of that money. So money laundering is different from corruption and corruption with the allegation which lies at the door of Mr. Sisodia. I assume that's the same allegation being taken that the, the chief minister and the deputy chief minister conspired to end, make this policy. If the chief minister says he had no role to play in a policy is of this magnitude. Is conspiracy a charge? Is conspiracy a charge? Is conspiracy a charge? Mr. Salve, for the ED or for the CBI to look at? Both. In a case such as this, I am reading. Both. Yes. Let me let me for give both? you uh, where where it comes from. Yes. Let me, let me give uh, the allegation is Mr. Chief Minister, Mr. Deputy Chief Minister and one or two ministers conspired with a group of businessmen to come up with a policy very favorably, which will be very favorable to a group of people who will raise monies out of it. That's your allegation of corruption. Who all collaborated in that act? Civil servants who were parties to that decision making are all conspirators of the act of corruption. Then comes the laundering. The money is, as the allegation runs, the money was paid by the wholesalers who made the bribe. They paid X, X paid Y, Y paid Z. Somebody had given an advance for some election that got set off. That's the trail of money. Everybody who has touched that money and allowed it to move becomes guilty of an offense for money laundering. He may have no knowledge of where the money came from, just knowing that it, it has come from some naughty business in Delhi. But he helps in passing the money around. That's money laundering. So let's, let's keep the two separately. Yes, ED is investigating the money laundering aspect, but that these are not, as far as the primary people are concerned, these are not in separate compartments. That's why Supreme Court refused by bail to Sisodia. So, you know, the courts seem to be pretty convinced of the evidence that they have. Uh, what do you think of what the High Court said when it said uh, that there is prima facie, the evidence is incriminating qua the petitioner? See, I I'll tell you, very the law that was under the Code of Criminal Procedure come to the conclusion. Yeah, under our Code of Criminal Procedure, the police cannot grant you pardon. A pardon is granted by executive clemency. Approvership is where the police takes a witness to a magistrate. The police officer steps out. He confesses to the magistrate. He tells the magistrate. The magistrate has to be satisfied. Prima facie, that this is a genuine confession. He is being contrite. He is coming out with the truth and taking him rather than prosecuting him, taking him as a witness for the prosecution is, well, is going to help prosecuting a larger uh, group. For example, I mean, in theory, if Sisodia turned approver against Kejriwal, maybe the court may not allow it because he will say both of you, public interest demands both of you be prosecuted. But if a smaller fry in, in, in the whole process says, okay, I'll come out to the truth and tell you the truth. The court is the final arbiter of should the person be given pardon, treated as an approval, approver so that he comes on as a witness to prosecute the main people in the conspiracy. Now, these are judicial decisions. These are judicial decisions. These are not taken in the ED head office. ED may agree 
to treat somebody as an approver. But it is the court who has to approve. That's why I think that some uh, Delhi High Court took uh, some umbrage of the vocabulary used against uh, the approver's statements. But but then you know if the court also if the Supreme Court tomorrow does not deny does not uh, does not give bail to Arvind Kejriwal in this case look at the situation that we have here Mr Salve the court does not give uh, does not give bail to Kejriwal suppose the Supreme Court also takes the view that yes there is a fair amount of evidence and we cannot at this stage disregard the evidence and if the evidence as the High Court says is incriminating. Uh, vis a vis Arvind Kejriwal, then the Supreme Court is unlikely to take a, take a different view. In that case, what's the lookout? I mean, Delhi is not going to have a chief minister. We're going to run the government from Tihar jail. This is what the people of yes. Delhi are looking at. And what kind of precedent is that setting for the rest of the country? Well, uh, I have only two comments to make one serious and one humorous. If you remember back in the day, we used to have uh, the Yes Minister and the Yes Prime Minister series which showed the battle between the civil servants and the politicians. And, and the civil servants, those were British civil servants, always maintained that the government would run much better if the minister stayed at home. So, <laughs> will Delhi run without a chief minister? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, is, is the chief minister superfluous in Delhi? I don't know. Uh, secondly, I have heard this argument that there is no constitutional bar. Well, there is something called the silence of the constitution. Did the constitution makers ever contemplate that a popular leader who is found prima facie guilty of a serious offense Import, next. would be in would be denied bail and would yet want to govern the state? I don't think the founding fathers ever thought of this. That's why they didn't provide a detail. Of course, on conviction you lose your seat. But what should be the position in the interim is a matter of personal conscience and propriety. I think you do throw it back well there. Mr. Salve, you've given some very solid perspective uh, on this case. And uh, let's see what happens after the 23rd. Matter is going procedurally. But uh, this gives us some fresh perspective on this. Harish Salve, thank you very much as always for throwing light on this with me this evening. Thank you so much. That's Harish Salve, ladies and gentlemen. I would consider him the last word. He's speaking on issues of constitutionality, but also tonight he's spoken on issues of political propriety and morality. On the political debate this evening, Ajay Alok versus uh, Anmol Pawar, BJP versus AAP. Uh, see Anmol, uh, there are serious issues involved. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously, even the Supreme Court will look at the evidence that is available and decide how to respond. If the case did not have any merit, then it would not even proceed procedurally right now. Uh, and you just heard Mr. Salve as well. You can hear me, Anmol. So, you know, last time I told you the High Court is pretty much convinced yes, yes, about I, the evidence against well. Kejriwal. Time has come for you to take a decision because, because public sympathy is not going to build up if the courts aren't going to support you. And the courts are showing no intention of supporting you yet. Arnab, uh, the fact is that Mr. Kejriwal is not named in the ECIR, which in uh, criminal jurisprudence is FIR. No charge sheet has been filed. Even the trial has not commenced. There is no corroborative evidence. And Mr. Salve forgot to inform the viewers that approvers come into scene when there is dearth of evidence. There are hundreds of judgments of the Honorable Supreme Court. The Honorable Supreme Court, while granting bail to Mr. Sanjay Singh, categorically said that there is no trace of proceeds of money. Not a single penny has been recovered in the last two years after more than 500 raids. And the second point, I was hearing him very patiently. And the second point which he uh, failed to inform the viewers is, that the constitution framers did not even contemplate that there will be a so-called premier agency enforcement directorate which will work at the behest of Bharatiya Janta Party which will work as a frontal organization of the central government and without a shred of evidence put a popular three times sitting chief minister See, all of this is who has not working the Delhi model of governance all of this is not getting you any sympathy even this was not contemplated
No, no, all of this is not going to get you any sympathy. Louder, please. I can't hear you. See, all of this is not going to get you any sympathy. Ajayalok is on the debate right now. See, if the courts still now, my point being, Anmol, 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 yeah. See, Anmol, it, Anmol, I'll tell you one thing. The the you have thrown everything at the at at the court, every piece of evidence. Why are the courts not moved, Ajay Alok? The fact is, viewers, if there was any observation from the court till now saying that the situation Kejriwal has been dealt with unfairly, there isn't enough evidence, he should not have been arrested, the arrest was not necessary, or question the timing of the arrest, then the sympathy could have moved your way, but it's going in the opposite direction. Ajay Alok. Not at all, Arnav, not at all. Arnav, the problem here is, we used to know that there is a difference between Loud. thief and a politician. But a new chronology has been framed by Mr. Arvind Kejriwal that the politician can be a bigger thief than the normal thief. And it's a shameless blot on our democracy that a chief minister is not resigning even after being in jail for almost a month now. Within six days it will be a month and he has not resigned. So he has created a new benchmark in Indian democracy. Look. There are four P's in corruption. There are four important P's in corruption which four a chief minister can enjoy and easily enjoy. First is power, preference, privilege and payment. And he has enjoyed everything. He had the power. He had the preference whom to give the liquor contract to. He had the privilege of doing that and he had received the payment. The kickbacks are there, the, the evidence are there, everything is being nailed and then also this arm Arajak party Shamelessly defends K. Arvind Kejriwal. And in the process, they have lost the entire credi credibility of theirs. Can I of course, they have been losing it for the last two and a half years. Because they are in over of corruption. The new, new ideas of corruption keeps on propping them. And look, this is only one. It's one, this liquor scam is only one of them. Now, there's a jal board scam, which CBI is already investigating. There's an inferior medicine scam, which is also being investigated. There's a knockery scam which is also being investigated. Say everything, ye to kuch nahi hai ji. Hume phasaya ja raha hai ji. Hum to aise nahi hai ji. Kattar imandar hai hum ji. Aray ji, to wahi ji kehta tha. Bilkul hai ji, kattar imandar hai. Kattar desh bakt hai. Aapki tarah desh bech nahi rahe hum. Aray kattar beiman hai aap loog. Aap kattar beiman hai aap loog. Kattar beiman. Imandari sahab ka dur dur tak samman nahi hai. ईमानदारी से दूर दूर तक का संबंध नहीं है आप लोगों का। उनकी आंखों में आंखें डाल के पूछो क्यों ने भाग ली ईमानदारी? क्यों राज्य सभा बेचारे? आप नहीं बातें, आप नहीं बातें, आप नहीं बातें सुन लिया करो। पैंसठ साल बाद इस देश में एक � you are scared of the daily model of governance. You are teaching corruption to other people. With a model which is showing direction to the country. You are teaching corruption to India. Free electricity, free water supply. You are teaching corruption to other India people who are running other states. These are new ideas of corruption. Utilize them. Arvind Kejriwal is now regularly taking tuitions in Tihar. Anmol, uh, Anmol, I you want to read out. Come for him. One second, one second. I just want to read out on my new Motorola phone Azar some Motorola tweets. Viewers, and let me read out a couple of the tweets. Uh, Anmol, one minute. Vijay, Vijay, Vijay Nakhasi says it is essential for leaders to address such issues transparently and effectively maintain trust and integrity. Gurleen Kaur says, everyone on please, Gurleen Kaur says, everyone can be on please, Aap should stop showing Kejriwal as a martyr. Srinivas Reddy Gondesi says, Kejriwal who once projected himself as a crusader against corruption is himself allegedly charged for the liquor scam. He has no moral responsibility to hold his constitutional post as chief minister. It appears to be a lot of people moved by the views of Harish Salve earlier today. And even Anmol should take a little bit of, you know, have a little bit of respect for the views that people like Harish Salve put your way. Sometimes it comes forth as advice. You should listen to it. Arnab, the question here is I'll now. Respond. Arnab, I'll respond. Please, wa Anmol, you have to learn Arnab, to I'll answer respond. questions. I am asking a question. You answer the question. Arnab, Don't try I'll to answer. make suo moto comments. Listen. 
what no no you don't know the question you can't answer without listening to the question you listen to my question and then ask listen to me very very clearly out here the question is why was the supreme court not listening to you the supreme court was not listening to you your lawyer abhishek manu singhvi tried to get a shorter date he said the same things that you said the petitioner is not named in the ecir there were 16 statements 10 by sharath reddy 6 by others one statement becomes positive the same arguments there is nothing new ajay do you get my point every single point that is made by anmol pawar is a simple summary of the points made by abhishek manu singh my question to you is why was the supreme court not moved by the arguments that were made by your lawyer abhishek manu singh why was the supreme court not moved why did they not give a Because shorter date why did they decline singhvi's argument why are you not getting relief from the courts arnab because uh, they think they have the propriety right to propriety that how how a faster date cannot be given Because secondly by virtue of cm being a cm he thinks that he can surpass the law admitted by the honorable and giving court, political statements in the court notice. not be, the matter is to be heard by 29 no legal statement and the enforcement directorate has to file a reply within 2 weeks let it let it it is not heard on next today it will be heard on 29th of this coming month and the fact is that same bench so, passed uh, similar observations while granting bail to mr sanjay singh but the case when it reached the honorable supreme court on 2nd of march 2024 the entire case was demolished by the honorable supreme court the observations were made that if the enforcement directorate fights the case on merits okay, then the honorable yes. supreme court will be bound to make observations as per the mandate of section 46 of pmla act stating that even prime of sai offense is not being made out who's not and they also very categorically Suenna. stated Suenna. that no proceeds of money has been traced and not a single penny has been recovered and i think it is for mr alok to answer your lawyer has already your board. lawyer has already said it in mr. the court salve very patiently he arnab arnab mr mr salve just said that whatsoever amount has been reached to whosoever person the ed must investigate and that is a part of money laundering 60 crore rupees has been traced to bharatiya janata party which has been given as bribe by p sharad reddy now why is it that enforcement directorate is not arresting uh, jp nadda ji why double standards if there is a clear so proof where, if the where data where is published guns? by the sbi on the directorate why are you jumping guns stick to arvind kejriwal the trace of money has stick been stick to the biggest uh, corrupt arvind kejriwal why is it that ED is not arresting the officials of Bharatiya Janata Party. The money trail has been established. Why such double standards? And your standards? lawyer in the court said, "There, where is the money? We have spent it in the Goa polls." This is the statement made by your lawyer. Where is the money? We have spent it in the Goa in the Goa polls. Yes, sir. And that's आप, why, that's why, that's why Raghav Chaudhary is not coming back. आप जानकारी नहीं रखते कानून की। क्या बात कर रहे हो? जरा law bites का पाया देख लो डे law bites का जवाब देंगे आप के वकील ने बोला जवाब दे पाएंगे आप क्षमता है आप पे जवाब देने की सवाल की मैं क्या दूंगा जवाब आपको मैं दे दूंगी बात आप मान लीजिए उन्होंने कहा है के बाद भी अगर एक भी पैसा किसी के पास जाता है अनमोल 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 इस वक्त तो जवाब आपको देना है क्योंकि मैं मैं देखिए एक मिनट एक मिनट अनमोल अनमोल एक मिनट अनमोल मेरी बात सुनिए मैं अगला ट्वीट पढ़ रहा हूं एक मिनट अनमोल ओके ओके जेपी नड्डा शिवा कुमार दत्तू तड़ेपली सेज एवरीबडी ऑन प्लीज गवर्नमेंट कैन कांट बी रन फ्रॉम जेल द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन डिड नॉट क्रिएट एक्सप्लिसिट प्रोहिबिशन कीपिंग द ड्रकोनियन ब्रिटिश रूल इन माइंड हेंस इट डजेंट मीन ए नॉर्मल सिविक लाइफ जेल रूलिंग कैन बी अलाउड कस्टमरी प्रेसिडेंस इज टू रिजाइन कस्टम्स आर पार्ट ऑफ लॉ एब्सोल्यूटली आई एग्री विथ यू शिवा कुमार जी I think the conventions are created by the way the political parties respond in situations such as this. And Dolly Bhatia says, "Never seen such shameless liars of AAP def def defending the indefensible." Anmol, leave all this aside. If the Supreme Court also says, like the High Court has said, that there are prima facie strong evidence against Kejriwal, what will you do then? 
I don't think the Supreme Court is going to view the evidence any differently from the way the High Court has looked at it. If the Supreme Court also makes the same observations against Arvind Kejriwal that there is prima facie evidence that he has been leading a conspiracy, what will you do? Yes. Louder. No, what, what if what if the Honorable Supreme Court says that on our directions a data was published and 60 crore rupees were transferred from the LS kingpin of the liquor scam P. Sharad Reddy to Bharatiya Janta Party. Go and book Mr. J.P. Nadda. Fir kya hoga? Fir aap kya how long will you avoid answering questions? How long will you, how long, uh, let Ajay respond to that. It's a, and how long I will the BJP spokesperson will how avoid answering? How long can your party stop answering question. questions? It's been more than 25 days. Is J.P. Nadda the mastermind of Liquor Gate or is Arvind Kejriwal the mastermind of Liquor Gate? Who is the mastermind of Liquor Gate? No, no, no. Who is the mastermind of Liquor Gate? No, no. J.P. Who is the mastermind of Liquor Gate? J.P. Nadda didn't form the mastermind. Who is the mastermind? 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 Oh, now you accept there was a liquor gate. Earlier you were not expecting. Who is the mastermind? Now you are accepting. We will JP expose each and every spokesperson of BJP. JP Nadda took the policy back. What expose? You are, then you why are did JP Nadda take 60 crore bribe? You don't have any shame left. 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 जवाब है ही नहीं आपके पास आप दे ही नहीं पाओगे जवाब अरे थेथर है आपकी सच्चाई देश के सामने आ चुकी सर फोड़ने का कोई फायदा नहीं आना लेट देयर हिम स्पीक मोर एंड मोर कट्टर ईमानदार कट्टर देशभक्त आदमी को आपकी जेल की सलाह के पीपल ऑफ दिस कंट्री दैट हाउ हाउ चीप दे आर दे आर नॉट पॉलिटिकल पार्टी दे आर अ करप्ट कंपनी दे आर अ ग्रुप ऑफ थम्स गवर्नेंस मॉडल दे आर ग्रुप ऑफ थम्स दैट इज अनमोल इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू वर्क Anmol, you People are constantly giving yourself you certificates. It will not work. Anmol, Anmol, you, People I will call know. you back on the they day the Supreme Court takes they a they decision they on it. And if the Supreme Court also says that there is prima facie evidence against your leader, Arvind Kejriwal, then you have to answer very differently. You cannot then start attacking the Supreme Court order. Also, no, no. your options would have run out. I thank you, Anmol and Ajay. Ladies and gentlemen, I am now moving on to a very, very important subject, which is the letter I have in my hand for the first time, a coalition of 21 retired judges from the Supreme Court and High Courts have written this letter to the Chief Justice of India. They have expressed serious concern over the mounting efforts in their view by certain factions to undermine the judiciary through orchestrated pressure, misinformation and public criticism. They allege that the motives behind these actions as being driven by narrow political agendas and personal gains aiming to erode public trust in the judicial system. Now viewers, is there an attempt to undermine the judiciary? The Supreme Court is coming under major controversy repeatedly. And there are people who believe that there is a certain lobby of four or five or six lawyers supported by a group of the media who try to target and embarrass the judiciary. And though, of course, the judiciary is never going to admit it, it is possible prone at least to being, I mean, if not influenced, it can get affected. Its judgments may not be affected. But the idea is that let's put pressure on the judiciary. Let's undermine the judiciary. Let's get articles written. Uh, let the lobby of the media work against the judiciary and hope that builds considerable pressure on the Supreme Court judges. Now, what is important about today's letter, Sohail and Kapil are joining me right now. What is important about today's letter are the signatories. You see this controversy, Sohail has been brewing for a while. Is there an attempt at putting pressure on the judiciary? But now it's very different. It's not just citizens. It's not eminent citizens, ex-bureaucrats, or just top jurists. Former Supreme Court judges themselves are writing to Chandrachur. Former High Court judges and Supreme Court judges are writing to Justice Chandrachur saying that we, a collective of retired judges from the Supreme Court and High Court, are taking this moment to write to you drawing upon our years of service and experience within the judiciary to express our shared concern regarding the escalating attempts by certain factions to undermine the judiciary through calculated pressure, misinformation and public disparagement. Suhail, this is happening at a time of elections. And we all know, I mean, let's not try to, you know, beat around the bush. 
the fact is that there is a pressure being built by certain members of the lobby as critical cases become before the Supreme Court. Whether it's the Kejriwal case, whether it be any other case, whether it's the electoral bonds case, build pressure, build criticism. If the court does not judge your way, say the court is not doing enough, target the Chief Justice. You know, it's, it's happening repeatedly, but now that former judges are writing about it, what's your thought? I think there's... Yeah, I what's have your take? <coughs> so, a help. couple of views here. Number one, the undermining of the judiciary is reprehensible in any democracy, especially when you choose to denigrate them at a moment of your choice. I've often said when the government loses in court, we talk about democracy being back. When the government wins in court, we say, oh, my God, democracy in this country is over because this pillar has also collapsed. Number two. There's a lot of noise Arnab, on social media, which denigrates the judiciary, which almost seems to be like a herd mentality. It's mob lynching. There's nothing else. It's a lynch mob that has come up and about trying to tell judges that, oh, this is how we think of you. But the third point is even more important. This pressure is not from outside alone, Arnab Goswami. This pressure is from within the bar. This pressure is from a select bunch of lawyers who have no income, no work, except to abuse the judiciary every day. They talk about, they blackmail the judiciary, they denigrate the judiciary, they cast aspersions on its integrity and independence, and they get away because they are members of the bar. What do you do to that? And you know that their agendas are clear. Some people were part of one common man's party who are no longer part of that party, constantly abusing. You have former presidents of bar associations constantly abusing. True about that. The fact is that the government has in many ways allowed this nonsense to happen. And I'll explain to you how. Aam Admi Party or the incarceration of Arvind Kejriwal is a judicial matter. Every time they discuss the matter... And it is not in court. They say, oh, it's political vendetta. But for God's sake, the courts have extended his uh, incarceration. The courts have denied him bail. The courts have denied Satyendra Jain bail. The courts have denied Manish Sisodia jail, uh, uh, bail. The same court that threw the electoral bonds out. At that time, the courts were independent. At that time, the courts were full of democracy and de democratic values. But today, they are not. I mean, it's the goose and the gander story. It is tragic that we are allowing this farce to play out. And I'm delighted that the, the, the judges have written. What is sad is that for after a long time, you have an excellent Chief Justice of India in D.Y. Chandrachud. A man, a man of letters, a man whose integrity is unimpeachable, a man who is for him to have to suffer and his brother and you know sister judges to have to suffer this. Constant abuse is tragic and uncalled for in every which way. I don't know how this is going to stop. I'm glad you're doing a program or not. Uh, is this because this is not about pressurizing the court? People don't this want to talk about, about it. You know, the, the problem it's also with the media. Sohail, it is, is there anything which is freedom. That's around, my problem. around lawyers? Yeah, around yeah, anything around the Supreme Court, lawyers, judges, the media also tends to sort of avoid it, saying, let's not into this area we don't want to be seen to be speaking for or against the supreme court but i consider it my responsibility to speak about it because of course pressure is being put and then people like kapil madan or others will say why are you assuming that the courts would come under pressure i'm not assuming i am assuming that there are attempts by certain groups to put pressure i am not assuming that they will come under pressure but i can give umpteen examples of the same and uh, Comment on it. Can you unmute yourself? Arab, let me just first decode this entire controversy and I will tell your viewers a quick sequence of event. When the electoral band, uh, bond judgment happened, none other than you know Mr. Adi Shargalwala wrote a letter to the president seeking that you know this judgment should be set aside, knowing fully well that this is not the procedure prescribed under the law, not in the constitution, on any of the you know law-related books. But then again, he wrote a letter. Thereafter, during the electoral bond 
uh, hearing subsequently, he again mentioned and he was reprimanded by the none other than, you know, Honorable Chief Justice of India. And he himself was the signatory of an identical letter, which was earlier written by a group of lawyer, including Mr. Hari Salve, who was there on your show, you know, at 9 p.m. And also this letter was supported by none other than our Honorable Prime Minister because he himself tweeted. So now tell me one thing, even, uh, you know, anyone, anyone looking at the sequence of event would know that this letter is being orchestrated by none other than the incumbent central government because the Honorable I Prime Minister I think you Minister should take that back. No I mean, if you're reason, trying to say that Harish no Salve and Justice uh, Deepak Verma, Anna, former Supreme Court Judge, Anna, Anna, Justice Krishna Murari, former Supreme Court Anna, Judge, Justice Dinesh Maheshwari, former Supreme Court Judge, Justice M.R. Shah, Justice M.R. Shah is former Supreme Court Judge, a part of an orchestrated attempt. I mean, I think I think you're running foul of decency, man. Yes. No. No, no, you, it's unfair of you to say the former Supreme Court judges are part of a conspiracy. I know that. I know you are. You know, I am, I am, I am, you know, decoding this entire fallacious, you know, premise of this debate. And now let me tell my, you know, second argument. Now I would ask one question. I have heard one of the signatory of this letter, you know, Justice retired S. N. Dhingra, who, you know, very clearly said when the honorable judges made a reference in a Patanjali case that I will rip you apart, though it was an oral observation, he said that the judges are not acting partial partially so you know and he mentioned that the judges should act impartially so by this letter what you are trying to portray it this letter writing of this letter is itself is an exercise to create this kind of a narrative against you know the judiciary but i must tell you that our judiciary is independent our judiciary no, how is the letter judges, is the letter aimed at judges, creating a narrative are, against are the judiciary kind of, i i'm sorry are, 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 because you will not end i will come in and i will have to lower your fade up for a while the you know the point is and, the and point is one minute uh, uh couple 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 you will have to be brief thank you couple you will have to be brief see listen I think you should support the letter. Anmol should also support the letter. See, Anmol, I'll tell you why. Whatever you case you have, for example, Audio. you as an Arvind Kejriwal, the courts are absolutely clear about which way they stand. And eventually, Anmol, can you hear me? I'm saying eventually the courts will go by merit. What anybody says or doesn't say does not matter. Or what is published in a few legal websites does not matter. The judgments of the court have lasting significance. So Anmol, have you read this letter? Yeah, I can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? I can't hear you at all. I don't think he can hear the fact that he needs to unmute himself. So it's a double whammy. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he can hear me. Anmol, have you? Can you hear me, Anmol? I'll try once more, Sohel. Anmol, no, you can you hear me? Language. No, you language. No, no, I think I think he's not trying to avoid it out there. Point being, I think Sohel, we are, I, I think yeah, there's a problem with the connection. You see, language. Was, uh, this is a very serious matter. No, no, but Sohel, if 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 Supreme Court judges are themselves my, uh, writing. Ah, see, if Supreme Court it. judges, well, stop it, it's too funny. <laughs> if Supreme Court judges have them, themselves started writing to Justice Chandrachur, saying don't come under pressure, obviously all of these former Supreme Court judges, judges of Mumbai High Court, former judges of Delhi High Court, Rajasthan High Court, Jharkhand High Court, Punjab and Haryana High Court, Allahabad High Court, Uttarakhand High Court, Supreme Court of India, all of them are people of tremendous experience. And they are trying to ring fence because they know that, you know, lawyers and jurists and others associated with Ahmadmi party or your supporters will try to put pressure. They are no, trying to ring Kapil, fence the Supreme Court take, under, against that kind of pressure. Anmol. So let's take Kapil Badan's point on board. Let's imagine Anab, whatever I, Kapil has said is true. No, let's get Anmol's response is, and then hear from you. Anab, Anab, the so fact, right. yeah. Anab, based on central government advice. Anab, Let's imagine that is Anab, true. The fact is that out of 23,790 sitting Badan judges and 50,000 retired judges and out of 20 lakhs advocates, I, have, uh, I just got to know that some 21 judges, uh, honorable see, judges and few that advocates that have written a letter. But I must say that the honorable Supreme Court is capable enough 
to withstand any pressure and any media trial. So I Very think it's right. not a matter of concern. We have full faith in the that is law pressure. of the land. That's and full it. That's faith it. No, no. So well, Supreme Court. So that is an admission. So no, no, now, no. You put the pressure you, and then you Kapil say the Supreme Madan, Court should be strong Kapil enough Madan's to withstand point, it. So well, last word. No, no. Kapil Madan's point that oh the central government has weighed in and all that, to my mind is a bit. Whether it's true or not, to my mind, it's a bit far-fetched because these are not people who would want a sinecure or want something from the government. I don't think Ari Salve either has the time or the influence over these people to say, okay, all you guys write a letter. Let's imagine if all that had happened. I want to ask two questions. Number one, as the gentleman from Aam Aadmi Party said more courageously than I'd imagined, would you want the judiciary to be undermined in the manner it's being undermined? Do you really fr feel proud to be an advocate in this judicial you know, system of India where day in and day out people are manipulating the judiciary? Uh, Kapil, tell me, do you really believe that a very I senior think, lawyer who I have a lot of respect and time for? Suhail, Suhail are, are you questioning the wisdom Sibar of Honorable Chief him? Justice of India? One minute. Do you think he will succumb under pressure you. of you advocates? Are, I'm not talking to you. When I, when I need your advice, I'll wrap No, but you answer my question. Na. No, no, I'm speaking to Kapil. Yeah, I'll come to you him. later. I was the one who signaled you, to you to be start, so Don't stop. Now, let me just tell you one last thing, Kapil. No, but I... Uh, you heard what I was, Mr. Kapil Sibyl said. The voice was not clear. Full court. Kapil Sibyl said, this is not going to be remembered as the golden period of the judiciary. That's what Kapil Sibyl said. You know that there have been enough discussions about the Supreme Court, about the Chief Justice, about judges. There have been innuendos in on social media that oh if this bail is before a particular lady judge that bail will be denied do you deny that this is going to dent the judiciary simple question oh, let me so let me let me let me make a very clear and a very you know simple answer no no, no. Arnab, you I, must I, not I, allow uh, i have to close so i have no, to close i, I have to close i'm totally to short of time i'll come back to that uh, no no i think i think the letter i'm going to put it out on uh, republicworld.com you can take it forward from there Viewers on the other side, the big story over the weekend has been the Iran versus Israel escalation of conflict. We have voices from the ground when I'm back. Powered by Amity University, ranked amongst the top three universities globally. PolicyBazaar.com Har family hogi insured In the India Today Best Universities 2023 Survey India's number one ranked universities in various streams are JNU Delhi Amity University Ames Delhi IIT Delhi and National Law School Bengaluru More creation, more possibilities. इस आम चुनाव अपने वादों ऐसी पलटने वालों को करारा स्वाद चखाओ जैसे खाने का तेल चुनते हो सही वैसे ही अपना नेता भी चुनो सही इन दी इंडिया टूडे बेस्ट यूनिवर्सिटीज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री सर्वे India's number one ranked universities in various streams are JNU Delhi, Amity University, Ames Delhi, IIT Delhi, and National Law School Bengaluru. मेरा वोल्टा स्मार्ट एयर एसी ये सुपर साइलेंट चलता और इसका स्लीप मोड बॉडी के नीड के अकॉर्डिंग रूम ठंडा रखता सो स्मार्ट शोर कम काम ज्यादा साथी का घोषणा पत्र कहता है कि भारत से परमाणु हथियार खत्म कर देंगे जब दुश्मनों के पास इतनी ताकत हो और हम ये कह रहे हैं कि हम परमाणु हथियार नष्ट कर देंगे ये किसकी भलाई के लिए बोल रहे हो भाई ऐसा वादा कर रहे लोग क्या वो देश की रक्षा कर सकते हैं
powered by Amity University, ranked amongst the top three universities globally. PolicyBazaar.com, हर family होगी insured. More creation, more possibilities. In the India Today Best Universities 2023 survey, India's number one ranked universities in various streams are JNU Delhi, Amity University, Ames Delhi, IIT Delhi, and National Law School Bengaluru. पलटने वालों को करारा स्वाद चखाओ जैसे खाने का तेल चुनते हो सही वैसे ही अपना नेता भी चुनो सही वे राइट वी क्लिक वी टच वी फील वी कैरी वी प्ले विथ फिंगर स्टील से बनाया होता तो रईस यहाँ से नहीं आ पाता रूंगटा स्टील का यही कमाल एक बार लगे चले सालों साल रूंगटा स्टील टीएमडी बार एक दम सॉलिड From the Delhi studios of Republic TV, it's time for Arnab Goswami on the debate. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen it's time now for the nation's sharpest opinion the world is on edge ladies and gentlemen israel says it will extract a price from iran when the time is right america has increased its deployment and moved troops to the middle east iran's attack on israel whether in retaliation of the attack on its consulate in damascus or in retaliation towards a trigger they have waited for has destabilized the entire region as i see it this is a significant moment because Iran which has through time since its establishment as the Islamic Republic of Iran in 1979 never got into a direct escalation with Israel and in that case this is a first but to think that Netanyahu will not go with the advice of his war cabinet to respond to think that he will cave in despite the US being very proactive since the attack is also hoping against hope he's also under political pressures domestic pressure my view is that there will be an israeli response in some form but the larger concern is whether this moment will trigger a world war 3 because let's remember both world war 1 and world war 2 began as regional conflagrations between nations world war 1 was between two kingdoms before becoming a full blown international conflict my view is that we cannot rule out an escalation we have to watch extremely closely because on both sides are very very militarized and very very determined nations let's take a look iran launched an unprecedented attack on israel fired around 350 projectiles at Israel, bringing in a new phase of tension, uncertainty and confrontation in the Middle East.
The attack was in response to a suspected Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus earlier this month. اینه که قدردان ارزش اقدام مسئولانه و متناسب جمهوری اسلامی ایران باشند و به جای انتخاب الفاظ و عبارات نامتناسب Hours after the attack, 17 Indians on board Israeli linked vessel were captured by Iran. Yesterday night, uh, I spoke uh, to my Iranian counterpart. Uh, we, we are uh, making the, uh, the point to the Iranian government that uh, these people should be released, that they should not be detained. You know, I, I would absolutely press for these people to come back to India. Israel has accused Iran of spreading terror. On Saturday, the Iran itself uh, took, uh, you know, overtook a Portuguese boat. Uh, and on that Portuguese boat, because it's an international trading route, there are 17 Indian sailors on it that are now being held by Iran. They're terrorizing the region. They're terrorizing, you know, other countries as well. India shares deep strategic ties with Israel and Iran for decades and it has been able to balance between the two sides. Israel happens to be one of the biggest defense suppliers to India. The partnership between the two countries has upscaled ever since Prime Minister Modi came to power. On the other hand, India's relationship with Iran is older. The Islamic nation, one of India's prime oil supplier. Israel Iran war a new headache for India is India caught in the middle again let's debate I have uh, with me the deputy spokesperson of the Foreign Affairs Ministry of Israel uh, Alex Gandler with me to start tonight mr. Gandler in this case how do you view things panning out? Uh, you know, your, your technology has been very effective against the Iranian missile attack. But, uh, you know, the Iranians are unlikely to let go. Uh, they are also a very determined nation, very militarized. Uh, what options are you looking at if you were to look at the next one week or two days? Two weeks, for example. Well, first of all, Arnab, uh, Shalom from Jerusalem. Um, Yes, I'm standing here on uh, on my balcony, to be honest. I'm standing here exactly where I stood on Saturday morning at around 1 uh, in the morning, 1.40 in the morning, uh, looking upwards at the sky and seeing projectiles shot over Jerusalem. Uh, this was definitely an escalation, the first time ever in uh, the history of the relations between Israel and Iran, and we did have uh, good relations in the past, prior to the Islamic Revolution, uh, that Iran has launched uh, an attack, a direct attack from its territory uh, to Israel. Luckily, uh, we are protected by layers of defense and also by layers of strategic diploma diplomatic defense uh, with our partners uh, internationally and uh, regionally. Looking at the future, we're keeping all our options open at the moment. Uh, we are listening to all sides. We're talking with our American friends who are a strategic pa partner. Uh, and we're thinking about, uh, uh, how we should respond to this. A response will be needed, uh, because such an attack is unprecedented. Uh, not only for Israel. This is probably the largest, uh, bombardment of aerial drones and ballistic missiles on any country. 300. Altogether, some of them are very large ICBMs, uh, so such an attack cannot go unchallenged. Uh, two follow-ups. Uh, first, Alex, you are saying that this cannot go unchallenged, but the Iranian attack was in response to the Israeli airstrikes, destroying the Iranian embassy's consular annex in Damascus. Uh, I think that happened on the first and they, it killed or wounded everyone inside. So Iran says that this bombardment of theirs is only a response to the April 1st airstrike. 
So in a way, it's one one. Why take this further? Well, first of all, I can't comment or, or relate to any such bombardment. Uh, from my understanding, it wasn't an, uh, a consular annex. As someone who has served in diplomatic missions abroad, I'm very well aware of how you uh, describe a consulate or an embassy. From my understanding, that building uh, was a, uh, a building that wasn't part of the Iranian embassy. Uh, uh, neither... Uh, uh, but one one is not something that uh we're counting uh i don't think that any nation across the world would have uh, uh stood still if its uh land was targeted with 300 missiles drones icbms cruise missiles and so on uh this is an unproportional response or attack by iran um by the way in the past if we're mentioning diplomatic missions please allow me to uh talk a bit about history. Uh, in 1990, Iran d bombed uh, the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires. Um, in the 2000s, uh, most uh, Indian viewers might probably remember uh, the explosion in one of our diplomats' car, injuring his wife, who is uh, receiving treatment to this day. Uh, in 1994, the explosion of the Amiya building in Buenos Aires as well. And in 2012, uh, explosion that killed Israeli tourists, uh, in Bulgaria, They're all carried by Iran and its proxies, uh, Hezbollah. Um, Alex, do you think Israel is taking on everyone together? You have a situation, you know, already, uh, vis a vis the situation in Gaza, you have an escalating and long drawn. A response from Israel there now you're taking on Iran they say that in conflict you should not take on all your enemies and potential enemies in one go but that's what Israel seems to be doing yes so now, first of all you're right uh, opening many fronts as strategically against what Clausewitz said and I think many generals understand that as well but let's analyze this for a second are we opening different fronts or is it the same front when we're talking about Iran uh, the way Iran has been operating since the Iran-Iraq war, uh, their strategic understanding was not to fight a war on their soil. Hence, the, they developed a strategy of using proxies. So let's talk about the Middle East and what surrounds Israel. Uh, to the north of us in Lebanon, we have Hezbollah. Uh, to the uh, east, Syria and Iraq, we have Hezbollah and Hezbollah, uh, Tahrir and other factions. You have them also in Afghanistan and Pakistan, where Iran is uh, operating proxies. Uh, Houthis in Yemen and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas are also funded by Iran in Gaza. So uh, if there is a war and there has been a cold war with Iran for many decades now, it has become a bit warmer. Uh, the fact that they have decided to bomb Israel uh, and shoot all those rockets at us is just an escalation on their part. Uh, we're not looking at uh, different uh, uh, fronts. We're talking about one front, about Iran, and it's not just Israel. Uh, you saw probably uh, that uh, during Saturday, a coalition of nations stood up to Iran and what it is doing. It's not just against Israel. What we're seeing is something, uh, belligerency against the entire world. We are just the victim of this specific action. But at the end of the day, the destabilization is all around the world. Uh, you've spoken about uh, the ship that was uh, captured by Iranian special forces carrying 17 Indian sailors and much more. Houthis so attacking yes. ships uh, passing next to Yemen and so on and so forth. This is uh, Iran waging a war against many nations, not just against Israel. Uh, Alex, thank you very much. We'll keep following up from Republic. Thank you very much. That's Alex Gandler, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm also joined by General Bakshi right now and uh, Colonel Jonathan Conricus of the Israeli Defense Force, IDF. Along with them is uh, Fatemi Karim Khan, senior journalist live from Tehran in Iran, and Baba Kherawi, journalist and political analyst of the Middle East and Iran. He's joining us from Los Angeles. Uh, Babak, if I can start with you, you heard uh, the deputy spokesperson of the Israeli foreign ministry saying there that, uh, that 
Iran is opening up fronts. It's much more than it seems. It is not a response to the April 1st attack. He seems to suggest that this is uh, the Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthi, everybody and their uh, whoever they were proxies for coming out in front and taking on Israel directly. Uh, Babak, where do you see this going and your response to what you may have just heard? Uh, hi, so everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. What is happening right now is, the, is another scene of a play that began 45 years ago. This is nothing new. Every other year, some such clash through proxies to different countries in Argentina, here and there, has been going on. And the problem at this moment is not Iran, but this is the Islamic Republic regime running the country in Iran. See what I mean? If we cannot separate these two elements, we will never get to the right response at this moment. Any coalition at this time, join together, come together, put all the efforts together, can topple and overthrow such regime, which in its own last election, the turnaround was almost 5%. You know what I mean? Is an unwanted child. If they can do that without even shooting a missile, without even killing a person, we can bring peace back to the Middle East. This is what, how I look at it. Okay, Babak, uh, uh, before I go to Colonel Jonathan Conricus, uh, Fatimi, 350 missiles and drones fired on Israel. Iran says this was a retaliation to a single attack in Damascus. But the scale of the attack has surprised people. Is Iran looking at a full-fledged war? Does Iran see itself as the leader not. of the Muslim world against Israel? Of course not. Yes. Of course not. Nobody here, nobody looking for a war. Nobody here looking for a war. Please be careful about your words. We are not the nation who is looking for a war. We didn't start anything here. It was the Israeli army who, who destroyed a building, who destroyed a diplomatic building, who killed several of Iranian people outside our country, outside Iran. It is not a, uh, there is not, uh, there is not, mm, it is not a problem of uh, who they are working for or what was the names or what was their, their relation to the government. They killed some of Iranian nationality people. And they, there should be a revenge. There should be a reaction. There should be a, a, um, an answer. There should be a reaction to these kind of things. Uh, we cannot uh, just sit here and see what they are doing against our people. Our uh, Islamic Republic government is not something um, uh, something um, against Iran, against Iranian people. It may do something that we do not like here or there, but it has a rule. It has a. Uh, it is. Um, it is. The, it is the. It is the definition of a government to protect their people. And if Israeli, if Israeli people are not happy with what is happening in their in their country, they have to uh, they have to show this. They have to go uh, and uh, show their uh, their disagreement with this uh, politics. No, I'm just surprised at the scale of the response. Colonel Jonathan, let me draw you in here. Why do you think Israel has come out in the op uh, Iran has come out in the open directly? So far, of course, there were the pro proxies, the Hezbollah, Houthi. They were working through proxies, but now there's a direct attack. Uh, what what is the what is the strategic intention here? And what is is Israel going to say? Okay, we are going to hold ourselves back, or is it going to wait for timing? Can it afford to escalate it further? and take on everybody at the same time. Right, thank you for having me. So those are two distinct uh, questions. I'll start with the second one, with what Israel is going to do. I think what Israel is going to do is respond uh, at a timing, location, and uh, intensity of Israel's choosing. It doesn't have to be immediate, and it doesn't have to be against specific targets. Uh, Israel has a very wide and diversified toolbox when it comes to dealing with Iran. 
Up until now, yes, we have been fighting their proxies. The Iranians very cowardly have been sending forward Palestinians, Lebanese, Yemenites, Syrians, and what have you in order to fight against Israel. Uh, we are still busy fighting them, by the way. And I can tell you that I myself was surprised that the Iranians actually found the courage to step out of the convenience of the shadows and actually attack Israel straight on. Their attack was a failure and we were able to successfully defend and intercept more than 99% of all of the incoming missiles, drones and rockets that were fired from Iran, which I am not sure that the guest from Iran is aware of because this is being censored in Tehran by the oppressive media or the oppressive regime against the media. But bottom line is that I think that we are we will see in the imminent future, not maybe tonight and not maybe tomorrow night, an Israeli response because obviously such an attack against Israel cannot go unchecked, especially not when it's from a regime that for 44 years have been chanting and forcing their people to chant death to Israel, death to America, death to the UK. I don't know if they've been saying bad things about India as well, but I know for certain that it's been a lot of death wishes to other countries. Of course, we cannot let this slide and we must respond to this type of aggression. Uh, uh, General Bakshi, where do you see this going forward now? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Arnab, there has been a paradigm shift in the situation in the Middle East, as the other uh, speakers have very rightly highlighted. So far, Iran was fighting through its proxies, the three H's, uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis, and the Shia militias in, Sir uh, in Syria and Iraq. Now it has uh, chosen to fight directly and uh, from what we learn from Iranian sources they are saying it is in retaliation for the attack on their uh, consulate compound in Syria where uh, you know a number of their top military officials have been killed total 11 have been killed in that particular strike and therefore they wanted to sort of uh, you know the united states did a lot to try and deter them to make them recalculate recaliber you know the uh, the american central command chief uh, corilla he personally came down to israel another aircraft carrier was sent in to deter iran the fact is iran has not been deterred and about 320 to 350, there are various estimates, some 170 drone strikes, Shahid class. Then there were the cruise missiles, about 35, and then there were about 120 uh, ballistic missiles which have been launched. Uh, Iran says it has struck the two air bases from where uh, the Novavim air base in southern Israel, from which it claims that Israel had launched the air attack onto its embassy so that base has been hit and they are claiming the major damage the israelis tell us that the damage has been very slight one girl i understand poor girl has been killed and about uh, 12 people wounded uh, total in this strike right it came in three waves the israeli air defense was superb it is one of the best in the world and it was aided by the americans and the british and the french who used their fighter aircraft to shoot down the drones as they came israel claims that the drones were just a decoy and they uh, have hit the targets that they wanted they got through despite these defenses and they are saying that 1.3 billion dollars have been spent by israel in this defense whereas they have spent very little in uh, in uh, turn but they are saying they have finished and the next move is on Israel. Now, to my reckoning, Israel will respond. Though the Americans are putting heavy pressure, let's be quite straightforward. They do not want Israel to escalate. They are saying you were able to shoot down 97 to 98% of the projectiles and therefore you should take it as a victory and call it off because if you uh, give a retaliatory strike, there will be uh, follow-up strikes from Iran. And once this escalatory spiral starts, there is no saying where it will end. It's extremely dangerous, very, very dangerous situation there. And therefore, uh, you know, like our external affairs ministers just spoke to you, there is need for calm, there is need for patience. Uh, I personally think Israel will retaliate. 
because of its own public opinion uh, pressure but uh, that uh, based upon american pressure no, but that may take a covert form they have done covert attacks uh, earlier on to yeah, israel but you know, they have done the stuck but, but, attacks but, but, on their general bakshi facilities general and general bakshi fact, yes, but general bakshi i yes. think i think i think what uh, what iran is not clear about and fatih me don't mind my saying it you are on very uncertain ground here and and fatimi karim khan in tehran i i'll bring in my own take here fighting a proxy war and fighting a real war are very different you as a country you are experts at fighting proxy wars everything for you is a proxy war hezbollah is a proxy war your support to the hezbollah is a proxy war your support to the hamas is a proxy war you may have been celebrating when the 7th october attack happened on israel it was a proxy war israel did not attack tehran but tehran was behind the attack on the 7th of october what you are doing by encouraging piracy in the open seas with the houthis one minute with the houthis is a proxy war you tell the houthis to fire ballistic missiles at israeli resorts you you tell the houthis to capture ships even the indian navy had to respond once or twice and three times and teach the houthis a lesson my point being to you fatim haji is that you are using syria you are using hamas houthi hezbollah but you are not fighting a war yourself now you are saying we'll fight the war ourselves are you ready because your first attack on israel has failed pakistani underworld don who killed indian national sarabjit singh in jail was assassinated by two unknown gunmen completely unknown gunmen in lahore on sunday he was attacked by the motorcycle born unknown assailants at his home in the islampura area of lahore while the motive behind the shootout remains a mystery pakistan has squarely blamed india calling it a targeted killing take a look at the development so far before our last debate on the unknown gunmen who have killed this terrorist Eleven years after Indian prisoner Sarabjit Singh died in Pakistan jail after being brutally assaulted by prisoners. Amir Sarfaraz Tamba, accused in the murder of Sarabjit Singh, was shot dead by unidentified gunmen in Lahore on Sunday. उन्होंने पापा पे उस टाइम पे हमला करके उनको बुरी तरह से घायल कर दिया था जेल में उसके बाद उनकी वहाँ पर मौत हो गई थी पाकिस्तान की जेल में ही उनमें से एक जो शख्स था उसको कल गोलियों से मार के उसकी हत्या की गई है कुछ मीर सरफराज जिस पे मैं यही कहना चाहती हूँ कि जैसे हम कहते हैं कि कर्मों का फल यहीं पर ही मिलता है ये उसके कर्मों का ही फल है लेकिन इसके साथ ही मुझे लगता है एक बहुत बड़ी साजिश भी है ये पाकिस्तान की ही सरकार की तरफ से क्योंकि ऐसे हो सकता है बहुत सारे राज हों जो उनको लगता हो कि बाहर ना आ जाएं दुनिया के सामने तांबा वॉज अ क्लोज एसोसिएट ऑफ लक्शर ताइबा फाउंडर हाफिज साइद सोर्सेज से तांबा एंजॉयड ऑल फेसिलिटीज ड्यूरिंग हिस्स जेल टर्म Pakistan has blamed India behind the attack on Amir Sarfaraz. मैं कल इंडिया में देख रहा था एग्जैक्टली इस तरह का इंसिडेंट हुआ हुआ है वहां तो इतना बड़ा हमने नहीं देखा कि उन्होंने उसको एग्जैक्टली इसी तरह का इंसिडेंट हुआ है आप देख लें मैं आपके साथ वो शेयर कर लूंगा क्लिप लेकिन हमने उसको 15 दिन से 10 दिन से उसको इतना बड़ा इशू बना दिया कि क्या हो गया This even as the world has rejected Pakistan's claim. I've uh, been following the media reports about this issue. We don't have any comment on the underlying allegations, but of course, uh while we're not going to get in the middle of the, uh, this situation, we encourage both sides to avoid escalation and find a resolution through dialogue. Why is Pakistan shifting the blame on India for alleged targeted killings? Let's debate.
Sundus Mustaqeen is a Pakistani journalist from Islamabad taking on God of Arya. Uh, Ms. Mustaqeen, can you, uh, can you tell us why the Pakistani terrorists, uh, the Pakistani criminals are uh, 